Oh, you're in for a treat of a, an episode today, everybody. We got people who are doped up on painkillers. We got people who are feeling poorly. We got people who have had no sleep. It's going to be one of those episodes today here on High Rollers D&D. I am your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes. Thank you for joining me and my friends here on this episode. We are joined by... It's a full house. We've got Rhiannon. We've got Trot. We've got Kim. And on the other side, we've got Tom and we've got Katie. Where's what? the weird gesture? No, Sorry, I, 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 I didn't. I didn't noise. It was for me. I scrapped oh, it. I scrapped it. No one liked it. The um, I think we should play a game. Figure out of the list of things that you mentioned at the start. Try and figure out who who's got, got what. what. <laughs> By the end of the stream, we're not going to tell you, but you've got to try and figure it out. You yeah. probably guess um, one of them. We yeah. do have um, a rather good jumper selection, everyone. Yeah. Today. I was going to say, not me, Katie but we have Katie's off. got a lovely cat-based jumper. Mine says, one. "Can't talk sleepy. Most days, I wish I was a cat," which okay. is. Beautiful. Exactly how I good. feel it. And then, Kim, we have a natural history museum the jumper. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs museum. Classy dinosaurs. Um, we have the kind of demon face jumper. Demon dogs. And then a nice, lovely pine scene. Lovely. Um, it's very lovely jumpers I'm today. Me and you are just in plain colors. I can't, yeah. I can't call this. This is a nice Stop jumper. The mauve. It's, yeah, but that... <laughs> mauve? The mauve? Is it mauve? Plum. Like plum. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Pro Professor, Professor Plum, plum over, over there. Over here. Yeah. You've upgraded from um, um, purple shirts to purple jumpers. It's all jumpers now. Yeah, it's yeah, just like back jumpies. Well, as we get older, the jumpers become more apparent. Hey, Shit. as we get older, speaking of getting older, <laughs> oh! this, it was technically Wednesday. It was. Yes, it was. But Wednesday. eight years we have been doing high rolling. Eight, 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 whole eight, whole whole eight whole years. I quit. That's too long. No, don't, no not allowed. It's <laughs> in the contract. We, we own your soul. Surely we need to get cancelled now. Eight years no, is not the cancellation. Please don't say those things. Well, in that case, I should say. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we have been doing this for eight years now. It's Woo! been eight years since we first yeah. started doing High Rollers. Well, yeah, um, yeah. Well, thank you, everyone thank at you. home, for all your support thank and you watching. And, yeah. and watching all these years. Uh, and to many more to come. Yeah. Huzzah! 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 Huzzah!
As the sun begins to set, casting the cauldron town in gold and amber light, our adventures continue. And I want to begin with somebody who was not present with you last time, for they had been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Make a constitution <laughs> check. <laughs> oh no. Can I? We've already I mean you can, but I thought you just wanted to go in, like Yeah. As yeah, I mean like, I was happy for this just to, you know, there's no role necessary. True, true, yeah. Um as Ophelia having been sat in the Grumpy Hog tavern, mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, consumed an entire bottle of wine. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> as your companions have been running around investigating other places to stay, you have booked yourself a room, uh, a lovely uh, sort of, not quite sweet, but uh, a more exclusive and luxurious room with a bath. Um, and I've just been enjoying the ambience and the atmosphere. Um, and the sun, as it's passed through the sky, is now beginning to set. And that wonderful golden amber light that I mentioned is beginning to filter in through the windows. And you can see that the the Grumpy Hog are... Uh, the restaurant begins to sort of not die down, but the bar and the tavern element to it begins to liven up. Um, and more people begin filtering in, enjoying drinks. Um, there is another musician here, um, a halfling woman who just has a... Uh, fiddle and it's just playing a very kind of light kind of jaunty tune um, just to kind of keep everyone entertained um, as you've enjoyed spending the time here but you do it is approaching the time that you were arranged to meet with your allies um, you had arranged to meet them uh, I believe um, on the road up to the Dominus Ignarum the Ducal Palace mm. is where you had set to arrange mm. um, and it is getting cl close to that time sunset sundown so what is Ophelia doing? Where do we find Ophelia? What state is she in? What does she look like? She's probably just... I feel like she's quite like a happy drunk, you know? Mm -hmm. Just like she's just chilling, just having a good time by herself. Um, but I think there's a bit of a niggling doubt in the back of her mind, ever so slightly. And I think she'll sit at her table and sort of just have a ponderous moment on her own for a minute and just summon Percival. Percival, can, can you sit down? Just sit down for a minute. I need to get something off my um, my chest. Uh, Percival will sit down, silently as always, sit down next to you, mm. hood up, long friar-like robes covering their skeletal form, hiding them uh, from anybody uh, perceiving their true form. But yeah, they, they shuffle, sit down next to you. Um, but Percival, I'm having a crisis. A just a little crisis. <laughs> I... I feel... Odd, strange. I can, I can. Everybody who walks in, they're so full of life, such a delectable, wonderful life, and I wish to feast upon them so <laughs> urgently. But uh, I feel torn. I feel plagued. I, I just helped those people in the bathhouse. I, I need to repent. I don't know what I'm doing, I'm supposed to be learning. Um... Uh, Percival will probably just reach out, uh, put a bony, kind of hidden by the folds of their long fry robes, and will just gently pat the shoulder, thank you, thank you, thank unable you. to speak, unable to really do anything to help you in this scenario. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll, we'll happily kind of offer a comforting pat. Um, thank you, Percival, thank you. I, it's just, I, I know that what was given to me was it's a gracious gift from the House of Blood, and I'm honoured to be able to spread the word and share the joy, but it is causing me so much pain and a hunger I've never felt before. And I don't know if this is a test. Are the House testing me? Is this something that I need to overcome so that when I finally ascend, I can appreciate the eternal gift I have been given? Or is this just... Am I just being played? Is this something I need to solve? <sighs> the empty <laughs> skeletal cowl uh, will just stare back and there's, there's almost like looking into darkness, into a void. Mm. You see your own doubts and your own fears sort of almost reflected back at you uh, as uh, Percival is unable to offer any sort of guidance or assistance. You probably would... Um, 
they'd probably be in all of this as you're kind of ranting, raving. There are like flashes of memories, right? You're thinking mm. about the gift you've been given. You remember the one who gave it to you, the Baroness and many of the other things. You remember those times when after you were given the gift, whenever you wanted a drink, you simply had to ask one of the house staff and a carafe of delicious red would, uh, liquid would be brought to you. Um, never really wondering where it came from or how it was, you know, acquired. Um, certainly the gamey, bestial blood that you drank on the journey in to the town tasted nothing alike. This had the, the, the taste that you remember from back home in Osseus amongst the House of the Blood within, within the great manor in the church and the cathedrals that you, you, were, um, you ha uh, lived in. Uh, had such more of a robust, refined flavour. Mm. Um, and this was very not that. You see that as the outside, you're sat by one of these windows looking out onto the plaza um, and sort of as you're kind of lost in thought and ranting, raving at Percival, um, you can't help but notice um, that as the sun begins to set here in Ash and Rest, uh, you notice a little bit of a curious ceremony taking place. And you're familiar with ceremony and that sort of thing. You see robed figures beginning to walk through the plaza and in fact going out into the streets. Probably from the plaza you could see several of them moving down different side streets and things like that. Um, you witness uh, robed figures um, in ornate, not hooded, but robed with hats, um, all emblazoned with sort of symbols and filigree and very look very ornate. Um, they have a silver chain around their waist and from it hangs the symbol of a lantern. Um, and they carry with them these long, tall staves tipped with a crystal that almost resembles a flame. And then also hanging from the staff is like a collection box, like a, a reinforced wooden reliquary looking kind of box. Um, and you see them move up to several iron lanterns and lampposts throughout the city. And they speak some sort of incantation. Uh, the crystal at the top of their staff lights up. They touch the lampposts and a magical flame springs to life in these lampposts. And you begin to see that as the sun is beginning to set, they're preparing the city for nighttime and they are lighting these lanterns and lampposts throughout the city. And as they do, you watch one moving down like a little side residential street and these lanterns are everywhere, clearly illuminates the whole city. As they go about it, you see this figure with the staff, and they have a, I should mention as well, they have a bodyguard with them. So they travel and you can see a very well-armed, um, private-looking mercenary or bodyguard is following them as they go as well. Um, but as the figure makes their way down and they light these lampposts and lanterns, um, People that live in the buildings of that street or the businesses come out, they seem to speak with the figure and they are putting silver coins in the, the collections box. Uh, a silver coin each for each person um, that seems to live on that street. Um, and they sort of have a conversation with the person and they carry on as they go about their business. Um, and as you see that, uh, to kind of set up the group here as well, we see a similar scene with the rest of the party. Mm. Um, so if we imagine the camera kind of pulling away from Ophelia from a bit, watching this strange ritual, uh, the camera kind of pulls away and drifts over Ash and Rest uh, back towards the tower, uh, the Raven Spire, uh, Raven Star Spire that you guys had, the rest of the party had been at. You guys are making your way back into the plaza, making your way, preparing to head up to the Dominus Ignar and maybe to meet with Ophelia. And you likewise see the same scene. You see this figure dressed in this ceremony ceremonial robes and hats with these staves and bodyguards making their way down a street. What are their hats like, sorry? Like, they're like some reason I'm imagining like almost witch hunter hats, I Yeah, guess. no, they are. They're okay. like kind of those witch hunter pilgrim hats. Yeah, uh, yeah. They are very much like that. And they have that same silver lantern symbol ah. um, on the hat, like on a band, like a, it would probably be a uh, white band around the rim of the hat, kind of like a... So there's one robed figure. Yes, and then a bodyguard. The rest is with the brim. Who had the brim? Uh, every there's, there's you see multiple of these. Yeah. Uh, so throughout throughout all down different streets, there are a bunch of them. Um, they're all dressed in the same robes. They all have the same staff. Um, you guys on your way as you pass through, uh, you would pass like several streets, and you would actually see. Uh, one who's making his way down a long curving street, and then you see another one going down the main street. The one going down the main street, um, you see that actually there's maybe a little bit more ornamentation to what they're wearing. Okay. Um, and they even have a pair of the dark round 
shaded glasses like Ophelia <laughs> has. It's almost an identical looking pair, um, and they seem to be wearing that. But they have more charms and elaborate jewels and things like that hanging off the silver chain around their belt. Their staves are gold rather than wooden, um, and they seem to be a bit maybe more of a senior or maybe some some sort of more important uh, figure. Um, but you see a, a dozen of these kind of figures making their way down, and each one has a bodyguard, a uh, very well-armed, well-trained looking bodyguard. So is it that every every one that comes out of the room, every, out of the building, sorry, is everybody giving them like this silver piece? Or yeah, like, so imagine like you've got like a long street, right? And there's yeah. one of these robed figures with a staff making their way down the street. And as they make down their way down the street and they're lighting several of these lampposts, every building, a family and a shop owner comes out, they put a silver coin in, in the thing. Kill it. And then they make their way like down. I, gold I know why the bodyguard's there. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Xanthius, do you want to make a, like, um, no, in fact, you're a gold dragon, you understand, you come from a gold dragon line, um, you understand trade and things like that, you probably would have a little bit of knowledge about this. Yeah, I mean, just looking at the, because also remember, here in Ash and Rest, the buildings are multi-storied, right? Yeah. So, like, one building, a family of four lives in the bottom floor, mm -hmm. and then actually there's a tailor shop with two people in the next one, and then there's another family of four at the top, that's like ten, you know, like ten gold, or like eleven gold, uh, eleven so silver, sorry, they're silver coins. Yeah, yeah. Um, the lighting business. We and that's one street. That's just one house on one street. And so, yeah, oh, you're damn. estimating that they're probably pulling in a substantial amount of money every day. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's silver, not gold. So, ten silver to one gold coin. But sorry, do I know, like, who these, like, what this organization is? Or um, you are not from here, and you said that you don't. Did you visit Ashenrest before? Or have you mm, been? No, here I've always just been like the. On the outskirts. Very edge of Caldra. Sure. Bordering Gildar. Um, can you give me a history check then, just to see if you've kind of heard the rumors of it or okay. anything like that? I, I've been to Kelskaris, so. Uh, well, I don't maybe, know if that's. Well, a... Maybe. I'm not going to give it, I'm not going to say. Uh, yeah, I didn't know if I'd just seen them yeah. there. So, sorry, so history. History, check. I think. Okay. Um, and then the same would go for Daisy. You said you've never been to Ash and Rest before, have you? Um, but you can make a history check. You come from more of a rural type of area, so I'd say with disadvantage. Rural, rural. I don't think mine's going to matter. Because... You never know. Might roll 20. <laughs> it's not Tom. Point. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, I got a natural 20 for 20. All right, sure. So Daisy, you don't know what this is, but Xanthius, you've heard of this. Sure. Um, not in Kelskaris. This seems to be something which is just here in Ash and Rest. Um, okay. But there's a couple of... Th First of all, you realise... This is a guild. This service, the, and judging by the, the nature of their work, I will tell you that is the Lamplighters Guild. Um, and most That's big nice. towns or big cities, um, their guilds will be almost independent to that city. There's no like empire-wide empire Lamplighters Guild. Okay. Here in Ash and Rest, they've clearly formed a business and formed a union or a guild specifically for this service, right? Um, okay. And you have heard of them. Uh, they made they made themselves pretty known. Normally, lamplighter, you know, in a town, having these sort of, like, torches and lanterns is not that common. The fact that there are these magical lampposts throughout Ash and Rest is kind of a unique thing. Yeah. Um, and they have clearly made a very solid business here, and they're very well known mm. here in Ash and, Ash and Rest. The Lamplighters Guild is one of the, the most influential and, and wealthy guilds here. Um, they okay. provide the magical lights on the, the city walls, uh, oh, sorry, the town walls, the big magical braziers, um, and uh, yeah, they okay. provide... So comparatively to how it's done in Kelskaris, Mm -hmm. um, I know that's obviously a much, much bigger city. Mm -hmm. um, is, is it literally like torchlight in Kelskaris? Whereas this is these. Kelskaris, it would depend. Light. So, like, cheaper area, like, you know, if you had like a more common, sort of like cheaper street in Kelskaris, it'd probably be a physical torch and lantern, kind sure. of like a. Um, uh, enclosed sort of like, you know, fiery lantern that gets mm. relit and done every day. In the more expensive areas, especially in the central district of Kelskaris, uh, it would be magical lights like these. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that might be done by wizards or like it, private citizens. They might have paid for it and things like that. Yeah. It seems that this guild have come in and said, we're going to illuminate this city, we're going to provide this service, and in exchange, you're going to pay us this fee to keep it lit. Okay. Um, so I'd say that with a natural 20, you, you've heard enough that you know that that's how they operate. Yeah. That they basically provide these magical lights as a way of, and it's probably sold as like a safety thing, right? Like, oh, well, a well-lit street, less likely for crime, less yeah. likely for trouble. You, need, you want to pay us to keep these lights going. And the fact that they're magical lights, you don't see anybody else with not like you wouldn't, you don't know how to make these lights glow. So it's not 
mechanically the light spell. No, um, it doesn't seem to be. No, it doesn't seem to be. So these are literally. It's uh, what I'm trying to Cause understand. Because the light spell only is, lasts like an hour, I think. Sure. Um, That's what I'm trying to. I was trying to understand like, why people are not like. Mm. I'll just use a lantern. Yeah. These are literally like wider aura, much brighter. Yeah, I'd light. say it's like torchlight, but there's no flickering. It's much brighter, um, and it looks like it's going to last until dawn, until you know the day. Damn. Okay. That's yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I think if I, I guess I'm aware of how not necessarily unknown this Gilda is. I know of them, but only by chance, I suppose. I might. You've probably, yeah, you've probably heard about it as part in passing on your way here, or maybe like overheard about. There's this really rich, influential guild mm. um, here in Ashen Rest. Um, so I would, yeah, be sort of uh, talking it through with people, like, oh, the lamplighters are out there. Uh, uh, they're responsible for all of these lights that you see up and down the road, along the walls, uh, and they'll last until morning. Um, um, the other thing as well is you would know, I'd say, with that natural 20, and you guys can all see this, um, there is one building here in Ashton Rest that glows brighter than any. Um, I think I described it briefly, but there is a tower marked at number five on your map. Um, um, oh, where is it? Number five is here. Oh, I think we might yeah, have gone yeah. past that one. Yeah, yeah on the way to the... Um, I described it as a massive stone tower with a kind of large crystal built on the top. And almost mm. like a lighthouse, that thing radiates light. Yeah. Oh. And it looks very well built. It looks very majestic. Um, do I know... Because uh, I don't want to necessarily have a lamplighter come towards us expecting some silver and we're like, mm, we don't know your customs. Are, are the travellers also like donating? This no, silver? no. Okay. This seems to be a citizen's thing. It seems like travellers, you are not expected to pay this. Um, you pay your, you pay probably higher prices for goods here in the city. Yeah. Citizens probably get things a lot cheaper. Um, they get free prophecies from that toad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would, free? No. It's never free. No. Not with ZZ. I would probably... Um, also advise like the group that's with me, which is uh, I guess everyone but Ophelia, like um, to. It's like a Pavlovian it's response. Very drunk. Isn't it? It's fine. Huh? Just having a mountain breakdown. <laughs> okay. In the pub. It's fine. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a little menti beer. It's a little menti beer in the pub. <laughs> I'd probably be advising to <laughs> not go too close to them because I'm wary of like the guards almost reacting unkindly to an unknown going close to the person carrying what like. 20 golds worth of donations. Um, sure. uh, just in case the guards get all tetchy. You do see that they're very familial with people. Like, the people come up and speak to them, have conversations with them and things like that. They pay the money and then they have a conversation, they move on and things like that. Mm. The guard is definitely keeping a wary eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, but yeah, it's just something that you see as it goes about. I feel like you kind of see this in the main plaza and I'm assuming you guys are walking your way back towards that street that leads to Dominus Ignorum. Mm, um, I could not remember exactly the notions of let's how we are going to meet up with Ophelia, but we can say that you made plans. Well, prearranged plans. I do believe I had notes last time, so... Okay. Wow. We had a few uh, needs, but I think we should probably meet up with Ophelia first before yeah. we uh, make decisions. That didn't answer the question. Oh, no. the, the question <laughs> answers the question. Was there a question? I wanted to go to Bright was, Shadow Cathedral to, to speak to the knights. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to go to the Rome cathedral. wanted to see Kiva, the Oracle of Coil the Empress. At Tower And there's six, Aquilo's right. Alchemical. With weapon rules, we can ask about potions as well. Ten, I think. Yeah. But and also going gonna... and seeing the Duke, or trying to book an appointment. Yeah, trying to book an appointment. With the Duke. Book an appointment was priority because we need to know when we're actually meant to go and see this guy, right? Yeah, the Duke. Uh, the Duke. If we make an the appointment, we can then do other things. Yeah. Sure. While we wait. But yeah, for we will appointment. head back because we had no way of actually contacting Ophelia and saying. No. Well, that's why I'm saying yeah. that you probably had some like okay. at sundown. Let's I'm meet. Even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's just split the party for the whole episode while we get all our shit done. And then. <laughs> and Ophelia you want, just I can... has a breakdown and probably will murder someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's um, true. Actually. You leave she... Ophelia on her own for too long. She has <laughs> come back just covered in blood and bodies. Like, yeah. ah. She's got a murder bar that's like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Getting redder and redder and redder. Um, before we do that, there's one thing we need to do. Mm. Before uh, that was just kind of setting things up. Crucible! <laughs> Who's on painkiller today? Thank you, Sabelle. Um, As a D6 from everybody, please. I, Chris Trot, you are right on it. Wait, have you, you failed every time, right? Yeah, every single time. I need to know. Do it. Three. <laughs> you lost it again. All right. What's that my fault? Oh, no. Yeah, okay, I got two. 
Uh, so that's a two in my pool you. currently. I got a two. A two. That's my streak has failed. Yeah. yeah, two. Oh, oh shit. Luck is four in mine. A four. Oh, Thank one God. in your one. pool. One. Our side has never done like a full failure. No. We've always had at least one. And Mark. Oh, oh, it's a five. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So it's two luck, four bad luck. Is that is that the right phrasing? No, luck it's and bad just luck. Fate. Fate. It's just fate. Good fate, it? bad the fate. It's not even good sight, good fate and bad fate, just the um, duality of fate. Two up, four down. I don't Looking know. Fate. Life is a roller coaster and I want to ride it all night long. <laughs> all night long. <laughs> Life is, life is a highway. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, life is a highway. Oh, life is a roller coaster. Is roller coaster and a highway. Yeah. <laughs> life is a roller coaster. There you go. <laughs> just <laughs> gotta ride it. Nope. Oh no, long. No, I'm. Anyway, I'm, no. Oh, just stop. Long. Stop. <laughs> I'm still mixing them. There's murder so, on the dance floor. You're not even one of the infected people today. <laughs> Don't get no. spoiled. <laughs> so, it's as you guys make listen. your way, Ophelia. Having witnessed this sign, you do see your companions moving into the plaza at the designated meeting point and time. Uh, mm -hmm. What would you like to do? What's the plan? Do you want to go meet them? I'm going to give you the option. I'm going to give you the option. No, I think Ophelia would just pour out her last little bit of wine in a yeah. glass. Mm -hmm. Final glug. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I guess, yeah, she would make her way sure. to the plaza. Um, one thing you do notice as, as you're beginning to leave, it looked like there were quite a few people in the bar that were like keeping an eye to see when you were going to leave your table, but were too intimidated to come yeah. over and say oh. anything. So as you get up, there's this like right race Wait, to try and grab did the you table. Have a huge team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 you had a booth because yeah. they had um, oh, yeah. rough and they never like, they it. They were there. The booth to themselves. <laughs> yeah, just you and your one skeleton. Yeah, um, yeah. That nobody knows. You put skeleton. like your coat on the, one of the seats, yeah. your bag on another one. Yeah. I don't think she'd even need to do that. Another. She could sit completely yeah. one edge of it. Really. But yeah, you see that. So as you get up and leave, there is a sort of race between uh, a couple of uh, <laughs> groups of uh, travelers and, lo and locals who are racing to try and get that booth, the window booth. It's a really good seat because it like looks out on the plaza. So everyone's been like waiting to get it, um, <laughs> but nobody, everyone was too scared to approach the weird-looking lady. Um, so yep, they, uh, so they leave it too. Don't but yeah, the rest them. of you. Uh, yeah. See the familiar shape of Ophelia and and Percival uh, make their way over to you. Uh, how uh, how drunk she looking? I, I leave that to Rihanna. Like, is oh. there a sway in the thing? Do you want to make a, a Constitution roll? How do dampiers react to uh, ten. Ten, like I'm just, I'm just, you, she's okay. I mean, you move with like what was, she's giddy happy. It's just yeah. a floating grace, yeah, wasn't it? Or was yeah, that Percival? Percival is like a float. Yeah, I was just saying, she can't see his feet. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> He's a floater. He's a floater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But he tends to float. Them. Yeah, Ophelia is very graceful, like cat-like as she walks. Mm -hmm. Very like. Yeah, pre definitely no okay. no wobbling or anything like that. Probably like a little a little color in the cheeks because you're mm. not fully like you know you are still partially human. Okay. Um, so yeah, there is. Sorry. Um, Sorry. <laughs> Uh, but Percival classically can't see his feet, just looks like a, a shadow, like a 3D shadow almost. Like Ophelia, this. good news. We found where we're staying tonight. Uh, and it's not oh, here. It's not here. Oh, you found where you're staying. I know where I'm staying. Well, you should see the other place. Um, it's oh. quite delightful. It's... There's a magical toad! Magical toad tells your fortune. There's a load of kobolds that run the place, and they are 24, very delightful. 24, I counted. 24. 24. And they attend to your every needs, or most of your needs. It's um, very loud. Quite loud. Sounds loud. very loud. But we've bought a room. Okay. Oh wait, we bought a room for four people. You're right. You need to find a place to stay. <laughs> I'm I'm fine. I've booked my room. I'm I'm in the grumpy hog. Isn't that what we were going to decide on? Well, it me was. And went to see the place. And then yeah. things mm. happened. Mm. Magical toad. It's so magical. magical. Ha okay, uh, on it's a, several premonitions. Is of it our like future. an oracle? Is it? Yes. <laughs> if I'm like standing behind Rowan, you look at me. I'm kind of doing like the handshake, like. Yeah, Gruff's on the other magical. side, shaking his head as well. <laughs> like. We need to beware the shadow of noon tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We also drawing. need to but, worry about the mm -hmm. full moon beneath. Uh, beneath the full moon, there is a stone arch or something. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. When the maiden cries, which I've been looking out for. Astutely. I cried a little bit. Uh, oh. I did cry a little bit. Then we need to worry about the shadow of the spire lingering. And beyond there wasn't that, a shadow. There's more, Daisy. You had two premonitions. I did, I did, I did. Okay. We'll find luck 
beneath the arch on Midday Sun, which could be a very similar arch. I don't know. The very same arch. Why don't you keep an eye out and then you you tell me if any of these things I, come up. I'm also, then very uh, anxious about all of them. Yes. The night shall overcome the maiden in the forest of dream. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what that means, but keep an eye out, I suppose. Mm. 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 Yes, um, but we, uh, I believe, are thinking of heading to get an appointment with the Duke, if you would like to come with. Sounds like a good idea. I am refreshed and rested. You smell like wine. <laughs> I'm very refreshed. Right. And hungry, but we'll leave that for another day. Uh-oh. Rowan stands. Yeah. Side steps. I just thought I would just, in the interest of of trust, I shall just tell you when I'm feeling hungry, and then you know what to expect. How much of that supply do you have left? Um... Little jiggle. Yeah, a little slosh. About a quarter, I'd say. I got about another day. Okay, do we need to go hunting again? Potentially, yes, it might be on the cards. Hunting? What do you mean? Well, we just went... Hunting. Oh. Just when well, we were on the road one night, we just went for a hunt, that's all. I had to resupply. And uh, this um, supply, mm -hmm. is it keeping you happy? For now. It's not doing the same job oh, as, no. say, a certain powerful woman that was under a mine would do, but <laughs> we'll get there, I'm sure, or not. Maybe. Did I just say that out loud? I'm loving this confidence. I am confident. Thank you, Xanthius. I am very confident. <laughs> Rowan uh, digs into a satchel mm -hmm. and brings out some dried fruit and nuts. No! Uh, if you're hungry. No, 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 no. It's not, it's, sorry, my dear. It's not that, not that kind of hungry. I'm oh, more sorry. meat. Mm. Fish. Meat-esque. Yeah. Yes. Meat adjacent. Meat adjacent hunger, yes. Mm, okay. The stuff that kind of embroils the meat. I'm sure the grumpy hog could sort Hob you out. I'm sure they've been could. there all afternoon. I mean, yes, there are plenty of people that could Do you help need money? Me in the grumpy hog. <laughs> <laughs> Good, yes. Yeah, the staffing, gonna... I will say. They seem very friendly in there, I'm sure. The clever toad has a lot of staff that could oh, help do, you. Oh, do well. they now? Yes. Well, mm. all kobolds. <clears throat> I've never really had kobold before, I don't think. <laughs> Or serve you. Yes, 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 yes. Daisy, wait a bit. The penny Daisy, will drop. Daisy, Daisy's just gonna like. <laughs> I don't think it will. Daisy's gonna stand closer to Rowan, just take the end of his scarf and just try and get it around the neck. Rotate and wrap it around. Where are we going? <laughs> you, as Rowan asked such a poignantly uh, appropriate question, you see the road leading off from the plaza, uh, passing the great stone tower that you now know is called the Coil of the Empress. Beautifully sculpted from stone spiral tower, rises multiple floors up into the air, uh, and it has um, almost like illusory dragons uh, flying around it. Uh, but the road continues past that, past the uh, bathhouse, the House of the Rose, the beautiful uh, gardens, the walled fence, the beautiful stone building of that, and it begins to slope upwards as it crests to a hill upon which sits a vast estate, uh, secluded behind its own interior wall. The vast estate looms up and you can see the glittering ruby dome that sits atop the Ducal Palace, the Duke's Palace itself, the Dominus Ignarum, the host, the domain of the Ignarum, of the Ignarius line. Uh, the buildings are made from sort of polished white ash stone, gilded in gold and painted red, sort of almost glistening ruby-like paint uh, that sculpts it. And you see this great crystal dome at the very top. Uh, there are guards, uh, elite royal, uh, not royal, but um, uh, elite guards dressed in much better armor than you've seen the town's infantry wearing. We are talking breastplate, chainmail, full plate. Um, uh, they are on towers which surround the interior wall, um, and you can see that there is a large portcullis gate at the very end of this street, that kind of sloped street leading up to the Dominus Ignarum, set into the wall itself. And there is a small guardhouse, and you can also see that it's not just the Duke's Palace. 
inside this wall. There are other buildings, um, and and you know maybe for humanoid uh, uh, servants and courtiers and that kind of thing. Um, okay. Are the um, the lamp lights? Are they still roaming these roads? And also, are they going? up and into this. Well, you can see that the Dominus Ignorum, the actual Ducal Palace, is lit from within. Like, there is... No, almost, yeah, it's lit, it's lit for him. Um, but there is no need for... Um, there does there do not appear to be any of the Lamplighter Guild's lights around the Ducal Palace. Right. It has its own magical lights. Um, the okay. street leading up to it, though, yeah, you see that, that there, there are all these lampposts are all over. Probably the Lamplighter's would have done these kind of main streets first. Okay. You get the impression that certain streets get sort of like, Perfect. make sure those are done first, and then you go out and you do all the side streets. Mm. Um, and like yeah. I said, you did notice that there were different types of lamplighter as well. There were ones who looked a bit more richly dressed, um, and then there were the others Common, as well. Rare, epic. Shiny. Yeah, purple, Legendary. gold, uh, orange. Legendary uh, lamplighter. Uh, it's a shiny. <laughs> but yeah. One. <laughs> Um, sorry, yeah, no, I was just, if, if there were, I was going to ask if there was a way in particular that we could see the more official looking guards sort of interacting with people, if they were like, fucking, fucking sit back off. Um, I would <laughs> say that as you draw closer and closer, um, you can see... <laughs> So flanking the portcullis gate, there are these two guard towers. Yeah. Uh, the guard towers have um, arches, uh, you know, full proper arches with very ornate masterwork looking longbows. Um, and they are peering out, kind of keeping watch. Um, at the base of the gate, uh, there are three soldiers all dressed in fine, not full plate, probably more like breastplate or half plate armor, um, uh, keeping to attention. Um, there is also what appears to be a more sort of scholarly um, steward looking figure um, who is uh, sat at a desk in a sort of sheltered little nook um, as part of the barracks house that outlooks onto the portcullis gate as well. Um, and they seem to be looking at uh, uh, several ledges and things like that. Um, people draw near the gate, but yeah, like there is definitely a big stretch of road that there is completely clear. Like sure. uh, for defensive purposes, there are no buildings or anything like that right pressed up against the inner wall. Um, you would very be you would be very obvious if you were to approach the gate. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, the the steward is probably the place to go. Do you still have the um, scroll, Ruff? You've kept it safe. Good. I do. Very good. Um, I think the steward over there should be the one to speak to. Uh, I believe that was where we meant to go. Before we go. Okay. Everyone looking good. I feel exfoliated. Exfoliated. Mm -hmm. oh, I always look good, darling. <laughs> Carry on. I can't deny that, no. Thank do, you. Do my braids still look good? Mm, oh, um... You look you... magnificent and gruff. Oh, hmm? thank you, mistress. Resplendent. Thank you. Beard, my, my beard braids good. Oh, very good, yeah. very good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, what do you think of the hair? I like it. Scales um, buffed? Very buffed. Mm, I can you. see myself in them. Can Zan you? Xanthius, Ophelia, <laughs> and Daisy. Can you guys give me... Not us. Insight checks, please. Uh, insight. If it in the corner, we won't see anything. <laughs> Ophelia's lying. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no. Six. Six. There's something wrong with us. Fourteen? Okay. Fourteen. Uh, got toilet paper stuck on my um, Ophelia <laughs> and Xanthius, um, you know, Gruff's asking, like, how's he look and everything else? And he's right, like, you know, having been cleaned in the bath and everything else, they definitely look more presentable. The two of you, Ophelia and Xanthius, you do notice that they are still wearing their, like, traveling clothes. They've been cleaned, yeah. but they are patchy. They are certainly not uh, refined clothing. Um, even Xanthius, yours is quite simple, but you have these ornate flourishes and things like that, mm. and it's well kept. It, it is cauldron clothing. Thing. Daisy looks like a cauldron citizen, like a, you know, a fairly one. And Ophelia looks quite resplendent in this kind of like uh, foreign looking garb. Gruff and Rowan definitely do stand out as maybe not, um, not necessarily bad, but just not as refined as homely. the rest of you. Mm -hmm. They look a bit homely. homely. They look a bit homely. Yeah. Um, uh, not so much their like actual appearance, <clears throat> but their clothing and their equipment. Uh, Gruff, if you could, perhaps it would make more sense. Uh, no insult to you, of course, but... Gruff, you look fantastic. Oh, you do? Oh, thank you, No, Owen. you do. I agree. I think you're ready to meet all the kings, queens, and monarchs. I oh, well, just... Of you too, no kings Rowan. and queens. No kings and queens. All dukes... <laughs> and duchesses. And duchesses yes. of uh, the land. You too, no. Rowan. I love the colour coordination of Thank you. Outfit. This oh, is my favourite well, meeting ah. important people outfit. Well, just on, on that, 
Um, me and Daisy, we've uh, been in culture a while. We understand the customs, how to interact with people, and so on and so forth. Maybe uh, we take that scroll uh, and uh, we take the lead on this one, just in case we come across any... Can I have a scroll? Is this, be <laughs> Is this because I'm a foreigner? No, 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 not at all. Uh, I'm originally from Guild Eye, so nodding. technically speaking. Sounds like it. Daisy's nodding. Well, it sounds like that's what you're trying to no, do. No, that is not at all what do I'm saying. Do you think that'll do better? I don't know. I, if you think that's for the best. I'm just saying certain places in Cauldron might react in certain more kindly to Cauldron people. Not that, uh, not that I am. I'm from Guild Eye. I don't want to take the lead. <laughs> but the lady, <laughs> the lady at the spa, she said that. Uh, Ashen's rest, folk. Respect when you have a certain pride about who you are and where you're from. Okay. Griffith is very proud. Very proud. He has brains. I have brains. Look how he's holding that writ. Very confident. Nobly. It's just so, as, as they're having that conversation, it's like you you're like listening to what Gruff's saying, and then you're noticing that like the stitching on like his tunic is kind of falling apart a little bit, and like the knees where he's like been like walking for a long time, the knees are quite worn and threadbare, and it's like I <laughs> see that. I look to Ophelia. Is there like any maybe some finishing touches would be in order just to really bolster our whole appeal as a group. Mm, now, I, finishing touches that might be exactly what Wait, I'm talking about. Watch this. Okay. Yes. Hello, I am Duke Ignarius. And who is this? Uh, Duke Ignarius, the Crimson Bastion. That's me. I am, uh, I am an honor to be in your presence. I am Griffith of Tremoro. Oh, it's such an honor to meet someone. Where are you from, Tremoro? Aye, it is a That's little village so all the way up in Iceheart. <laughs> Out of interest, That's this character you're playing, Rowan, what do you imagine that outfit to be? Oh, uh... Like well, this is common shine. garb of tomorrow. Oh, I'm no, yes, you're... Yes, no, yes. Village. Your character, you are playing Gruff mm. in this scene. I fully... <laughs> I am Gruff, yes. <laughs> you are Gruff. You're Xanthius. Yes. I'm playing the Duke. This is the Duke. Duke. I didn't know that you could act, too. Thank you, yes. You should do a I whole stage show. I should. Can he sing, too? Can you dance? I've never tried. Oh my gosh, we should try. We should try. We should absolutely try that. Okay. Now? <laughs> in Osseus, we very much take pride in the creative arts, so it would do me a great honor to see a performance. I could try something. At some point. Me. At some point. Any I tried doing the worm. To be a performance check. Hang on. <laughs> could you demonstrate that live in the studio? Hell no. This guy. <laughs> 14 plus my performance of four. 18. 18. It is the worm. And it's an exceptionally good the worm. Uh, it's loud, though. Some, it's, <laughs> uh, well, also, <laughs> you are throwing yourself onto hard cobblestone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, in Althea? Is it this w -Y -R immediately, yeah. 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 It's the worm. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Th this is a draconic dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's outside the palace. Apparently. Yeah. Why? It's not Why? like the worm like this. It's you pretend to have wings <laughs> and you do like a dragon dance. Yeah. Um, this immediately captures the oh, attention no. of pretty much everybody, including the guards and like who are like looking at you on the street, on the approach to the dancing <laughs> home, kind of very curiously like watching you, but also citizens who are just like they're like, what's the? It's pretty good. Like they're kind of like <laughs> they're commenting on the dance, like oh he knows how to move, doesn't he? Uh, but like why is he doing it in the street? Um, there is like. You earn three silver coins. <laughs> um, as like people think it's a street performance, and so they like, oh, well done, and they throw you a silver coin. Oh, thank, thank you so much. <laughs> Very nice. Triple threat. <laughs> This what? is the most wonderful, most wonderful ruin. Uh, oh, thank you. I've barely done. I, I should have. I should have done some flexes beforehand. I don't Got think the muscles all supple. Yeah. The House of Blood would have been honoured to have witnessed that as a collective. <laughs> and do the big finale, which is where the worm breathes fire. <gasps> wow, that would have been amazing. Which I can't do, but I do the hand gestures. <gasps> I feel, I feel, I feel, that, is, that is the hand <laughs> gesture of breathing yeah. fire. Part of the dance is this. Yeah. Yeah. Do the worm. <laughs> yeah. It's a big I take talk. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't have to do the hand gestures. 
With the whole breathing fire well, thing. Maybe you could help. Could team up. We could team up. I'm maybe not good at the, um, make the fire. actual dance piece myself, no. For a minute. <laughs> Just get comfy. I don't have to do anything. Uh, I am now more covered in ground dirt than I was before. Oh, yeah, you know, he's, and it's like, you know, definitely muddy, you know, not muddy, but like dirty and dusty from the cobblestones. And, oh, yeah. see, now, now we need to get you all cleaned up, though, see? Now we need to go and get you something oh, look. different. The worm would 100% involve mm. some, like, minor form of twerking for the tail as well. There would be like a little kind of like, <laughs> like a little butt, May have butt wiggle. a couple of like deep slaps as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> it's very cultural. I took 10 thunder damage. <laughs> <laughs> Cultural indeed. <laughs> Stop this, my ass cheeks keep great. One D ten thunder damage. <laughs> Roll for something. Oh my god. <laughs> Rowan is so thick. Anyway. How many cuts do you take to kill a man? <laughs> <laughs> or a cobalt. Um, work. <laughs> do not perform this <laughs> in front of the cobalt. <laughs> <laughs> you get like fat or snap. <laughs> <laughs> you just get dusted. <laughs> just twerking in the background, sending out a shockwave. <laughs> just like, like an anime where it cracks the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it goes black and white. It's the impact frames! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be fair, I came up with the twerking bit. That's it, Trot. Oh. I kind of like, I Not set him up for Trot. Like, Not that you shut this down, but you're just like adding to it. Yeah. Oh, I oh, can't wait for the thumbnail that. for this episode. Oh. <laughs> I can't, wait, I can't wait for the fan art. I want the animation. I want that impact frame animation of Ruin's ass cheeks just clapping <laughs> and a cobbled being annihilated in black and white. Of all the lanterns that have just been lit. <laughs> <laughs> Wiped out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it reminds me, this is a random thing, but you know that they did that hat films animation of us doing the Star Wars noise. Yeah. And there's an explosion where they do the black and white. That's oh, yeah. exactly yeah, as yeah, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Anyway. Oh. <clears throat> so anyway, what, what I was getting at, um, <clears throat> Ruff Ro <sighs> and Rowan, um, is now we have had the baths, but um, our clothing is not that ours is finer than yours. <laughs> it's not what I'm getting at at all. Uh, it's just ours is more. Children. And appropriate. Santhias, be straightforward in what you're saying. You're saying all these pretty things, but I'd rather you were just straightforward. You have beautiful fur, you have a oh, wonderful beard, you. Oh, you smell you. fantastic, I and do. you have been recently cleaned. It's great. I love to see and smell it. It's leathers and furs and pelts just strapped together with bits of string and, and rope and stuff. It's hopes and dreams. Hopes and dreams. Uh, whatever Sorry. that means. It keeps me warm in the frigid and dangerous temperatures ice Practical, very practical, practical, very practical yes. If you were not to wear this in ice heart, you'd freeze to death. Yes. It's just not very... It, it's more, it's less that it's not cauldron, it's more that it's like, um, worn. It's like really worn and tired. Mm. It's not, you know, it's practical, but it's not, you know, it's been quite heavily used. Like maybe it's, you know, that kind of vibe. Cauldrons don't necessarily need it to be cauldron. They just need it to be well cared for. I don't have fancy clothes for fancy things, like fancy places like you go to. You're very fancy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I am. I, well, yes, I mean, you know, <laughs> another sash and a belt. And... That's very fancy to me. <laughs> it's very fancy to me, too. I imagine you live a life of, you know, being in a library or, you know, yeah, some kind of gentle work or something is like that. Is library clothes? Is this, is this what you, this is? You, I mean, I've never been to one, but I imagine. <laughs> indoors. I imagine you work indoors. As you guys are having this conversation, one of those guards <laughs> has so right. made their way down. Um, and it's just kind of walking towards you kind of calmly, not like weapons draw or anything like that. And as they get closer, they'll just say, hey, old travelers, uh, is there something... Do you need something, or are you here for a reason? Um, this oh. is the road to the Duke's <laughs> palace, uh, so we just want to make sure that... Oh, apologies, we didn't intend to uh, to delay for so long. Um, yes, we... I just noticed that you've been stood here for a while, your friend did a bit of a sort of dance performance... Impromptu. You've, you've just sort of been loitering, mm. and we just want to... I just want to make sure that, you know, if you've got business oh, here, or... So sorry. Uh, we could back off. Oh, no, no, we, uh, we actually have... Um, uh, we were hoping to meet with... Um, uh, not servant, was it? It was a uh, 
the <coughs> fucking character I played in the one shot. Oh, well, so you need to tell me. His name was. Not specifically the character. Not the specifically that rank. one. That's not who it was. It was what they Conscious. do. Con- conscientious? Concierge. Con. Con. No, hang on. Considerate. We're hoping to meet with the considerate. Uh, you would like to speak with the Duke's considerate? Uh, well, we um, we have um, been blessed with uh, the Duke's favour. Oh, uh, well, uh, he will look at it and say, oh, it's not for me to check that. I will summon considerate um, Orgrim, and he will come and speak with you. Uh, we obviously can't let you through the gates, but you're more than welcome to come and wait up um, in the in the, the gatehouse uh, oh, while you wait. Thank you very much. Um, yes, come with me. Um, and the guard will lead you up. Uh, he will say something to that scholar who was working the ledger. Um, they're not going to be too secretive about it. They'll just say, could you send for considerate Orgrim, please? Apparently we have some travellers here who bear a duke's favour, um, and I think that he sh- and they would like to speak with the with the considerate. And the scholar will kind of look up and say, like, oh, cer- certainly, yes, of course. Uh, and they will kind of scurry off, and the guard will lead you in. The gatehouse has, like, basically a large room set aside for people who are waiting to go into the Ducal Palace, basically. So it's kind of like a comfortable lounge. Um, There are sofas. Uh, They are not the fanciest sofas. They're well cushioned, um, but they are not like gilded or anything like that. They're kind of wooden benches with soft cushions built into them. There's a low table. There's a pitcher of water and some dried fruit and nuts and things like that just waiting for people. And you're you're not waiting. You're not kept waiting very long. Um, You'll maybe hear about sort of like five, ten minutes. Um, So what I should say is it's not necessarily very practical clothing very useful clothing but uh, uh, just people in cauldra tend to judge by the cover very quickly um and i get to the point what what do you want to do do you want to go clothes shopping with me oh yay <laughs> okay but i feel like you're fishing for you something are. right now oh no no i mean it's too late now i suppose oh. but um we could get you a big shirt you want a shirt a belt? Buttons. Mm, maybe like, um, oh, what colour would suit? Maybe buttons. some more blue. Blue does, you are, you've got blue now. We can go for more blue. Maybe some greens. Would greens do? Would you like greens? You're this, staring at me, but... <laughs> this is a whole world I have no idea about, so I'll just take your lead, Lord Santhius. We're going have... shopping. Go <gasps> Yay! You want to go, Ophelia? I love to go shopping! Great. We'll get you some nice cauldron clothes. <gasps> it's right, it's right. Rowan, would you like to go oh, shopping? Go shopping for Gruffers. Oh, I really would hate you, would shopping. You, Rowan, would you like a nice... Not me, too. Yes! I get an outfit. Yeah, you need Daisy, an outfit. But I already look ready. I need your, your help. You can look even more ready. <laughs> True. Like double what ready. What would you add, Ophelia? Maybe like a nice cravat, or like a... What's that? Like a, like a, like a, like a, a fancy silk neckerchief that mm. can be done oh, up all mm. nice, that look lovely, that okay. accentuate your collarbones, you've got nice strong collarbones, good shoulders. Okay. Something mm. like that, a nice vest. Right. Oh, mm. three-quarter sleeves would look wonderful. Oh, would look yeah. wonderful, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like a cuffed thing, maybe oh, quite large cuffs. that'd be nice, yeah. Mm. Could but we get something that goes the whole <gasps> yes. way? Oh, yes, yeah, so, I mean, probably. Can I tie little ribbons in the end of the braids and Gruff's beard? <gasps> yes. What colour? Blue. Blue. I mean, yeah, we just go with blue for you for now. <laughs> Sounds very fussy. Mm, well. And restrictive. How expensive is this all going to be? Because oh. I have got a little bit. I've just got two silver just then. <laughs> uh, well, for Graf, maybe a reasonable, ordinary clothing amount for you. Hmm. <laughs> Might be more. <laughs> Lots of fabric. Yeah, much mm, more fabric. That, yes. that two silver take me up to 90 gold exactly. Two nice. silver? Oh, damn. Mm. But you have to well, keep it in three silver, but two silver's did, fine. What I did say three Whatever I put in. <laughs> well, you put in two silver. So there's one. a silver piece out. <laughs> <Draw one>. Somebody's <laughs> taken that. That's gone. Penny. Yeah. Well, silver coin. Mm, take that. Walked past, flicked it into it's the like air. half a day's wages. Snapped it out. I'll take that. Um, it's like finding like 200 quid on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rich. Nah, it's not quite that. It's, it's not quite that. It's, uh, you know, uh, it's like finding a fiver. Um, oh, that's nice. Anyway, that's a yes, five minute conversation. Yeah, five minute conversation is you guys have that. Well, I'm glad that you're up to 90 gold exactly. That's lovely. Gruff is um, horrified oh. during this whole conversation. As Gruff is horrified, take pride in um, himself. there is uh, <laughs> the guard uh, stands yeah. to attention yeah. as a dwarven figure enters. Uh, they are very well dressed. Um, you can see that they are dressed in a fine sort of red um, vest kind of tailcoat. Um, they have a very elegant shirt. Um, you can see that they have almost like a, a, a 
cape or a cloak that's kind of almost like a mantle more than anything with a, uh, a chain with a large ruby set into it. Uh, their graying beard is kind of brown with stripes of gray and streaks of gray into it, very neatly oiled and braided into a single long braid uh, that kind of falls down to the middle of their chest. And you can see that on their sort of around their cheekbones, there are these perfect gold studs um, that you can tell are their earth skin. It's not like embedded, they are, but it's been shaped into these perfect round studs, sort of all along their cheekbones like this going up, and then it begins to curl around their eyes, almost like dragon scales. There is an element there of it almost being styled like golden dragon scales. Um, a little bit older, so kind of looking at sort of maybe 40s, 50s if they were a human. Um, so graying in the graying in the beard, uh, bald of head, um, and they kind of see you. You are the ones who have uh, wanted to see me and have brought forth a Duke's favor. Oh yes, um, yes. We uh, you may, may have heard of the uh, struggles in the village of Burnell, not too far away. Um, I can't say that I have, but we've yet to ah. receive the report from the captain. I am considerate Edarth Orgrim, at your pleasure. I serve Duke Ignarius and the host of Ignarum. Um, well, um, let's just have a seat, if you don't mind. Uh, have you had water, uh, refreshment and that sort of thing? Uh, we have been in the city a while, um, but I certainly wouldn't say no to. Oh, please. Um, and he will gesture. And you can see that out of nowhere, a cobalt, uh, a red, uh, kind of red, and there's almost a blue kind of like, kind of create like purple in between the scales, um, cobalt, um, who has been following silently, quietly kind of appeared from the shadows behind Orgrim. Of course, consider it. Uh, and they begin like pouring out all the drinks and things like that. Um, and they kind of set everything up um, and seem to almost be their assistant or something like that. Um, and consider all Grim will say, um, so you bear a duke's favor, uh, is it? Uh, and what is your intention uh, with all of this? You wish to, well, what brings you to my, my good draconic lord? Uh, hmm. <laughs> Rowan, like, tries to sit in one of these chairs. It's pretty small for you. I mean, it's, it's so human it's just size. So... making, like, squeaks and stuff. Yeah. You fit in it, but it's awkward. He doesn't feel like he belongs, <laughs> so he's trying to keep to himself and keep very stiff. Uh, Orgrim seems to take in, yeah, what so, like, Roman's kind of sat there awkwardly. How's everyone else seeing? Because this figure is definitely taking you all in, like, taking time to sort of look you up and down and look over. So we've got, like, Roman's awkwardly, like, trying not to make much noise, mm -hmm. trying to sit there quietly. Um, how's everyone else kind of, like, reacting to this scenario? What about Daisy? She's uh, smiling politely. But just sitting, <laughs> just smiling. Okay, nice. Yeah. Okay. She she just doesn't really know. She doesn't quite know what to do, but she's like, just doing that thing of like nodding and smiling and yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. Pretty much. Um, what about Ophelia? Uh, she's sitting very straight, very tall, looking very like chin up, very presentable. With mm -hmm. Percival just looming behind her, stood up behind her, mm -hmm. like her shadow. She's just looking very prim. Mm -hmm. Okay. And drunk. And a little bit <laughs> tanked. <laughs> Absolutely <Sure>. tanked. <laughs> uh, what about Griffith? I think he's probably, um, he's in kind of like trying to be a knight mode or like, you know, he's trying to imitate what he's seen of knights on watch. So he's very, he stood up like perhaps kind of a little bit behind um, Daisy or something like that, trying to carry himself in like a good, like, Knightmanly yeah. posture. Yeah. Absolutely, like um, in a knightly manner, like yeah. present a strong, confident, yeah. bold kind of like persona. Yeah, because I think that's yeah. He's trying to be sure. He's trying to manifest. <laughs> manifest knight. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then finally, Xanthius. Uh, I think um, I'm attempting a, a sort of relaxed nobility almost type deal. Um, so putting on a relaxed to, air. Yeah. Seems like you're the one sort of directly engaging with the considerate, like, you know, maybe that initial speaker that you get in a... Yeah, group. almost like a... I, I want to be a cauldron in this situation, yeah. I suppose, and uh, reflect that back on onto them. So what I would say is anybody who feels that their character is kind of putting on a bit of an act or is, like, trying to impress the considerate in some form of way, <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, which to me sounds mostly like Ophelia, Gruff, and Xanthius, sure. with Rowan and Daisy being just a bit more, like, oh, not God. knowing what to do with themselves kind of yeah. thing. Um, anybody who wants to kind of put forward a persona 
you can roll um, your choice of any charisma-based skill. So depending on what you want. So for Ophelia, if you're trying to be very regal and prominent, it could be intimidate or it could be persuasion. Because intimidate is also being quite forceful with your personality, mm -hmm. right? For Gruff, again, it could be intimidate or it could be um, like, if you think that this is more of a performance, like he's trying to play the role of a knight. Because he doesn't know yet. Like, then it, I would say maybe more of a performance, like imagining how it is in a story. Um, for Xanthius, it sounds more like um, either deception or a persuasion. Yeah. Um, but I yeah. think that you're kind of putting off more of a. That's the thing. It's not oh, so strictly out. technically a deception, I suppose. It's not, but there is definitely an element of like trickery to it. Yeah. Like you're think... trying to play something that you are not. Yeah. Well, I am. A gold dragonborn. You are. Um, so, but you have yeah. not lived as one. No, 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 no. So I'll give you your choice. It would either be performance or deception, I, I think. I think, um, yeah, okay. In that case, uh, deception would be fine. Uh, cool. If Actually, I, all of mine are identical. Um, and you are welcome to use your pull of crystal fate as well. Good point. Hmm. But yeah, Rowan and Daisy, um, you guys I'm going to basically have as like a, uh, so if, what is um, your charisma modifier? So imagine you get 10 and then add your charisma modifier. But you're not trying to like put on a certain act here, so you're not going to be able to like, 13. Uh, in kind of create a persona. So 13 is a default for you. Uh, my charisma is 14. So plus two, so 12. Okay. All right. Uh, so Xanthius? Natural 20, 22. 22. Oh, wow. Two natural 20s, first two rolls. Gruffith? Yeah. All the gear and no idea. Natural one. Natural one. Oh. It kind of fits. It kind plus of fits. one. Yeah, plus one. Yeah, so two. But yeah, um, it, it kind of fits. Yeah. It kind of fits. He's uh, not what he's doing. Four. Four. Intimidation. Uh, four on intimidation. Okay, I'm actually going to make an insight roll for Orgrim. Okay. And I am going to spend one of my crucible dice because sure. this is an ability check, so I can add that to this. Yeah. Okay. Um, Orgrim. Yeah, I'm gonna. So the way I'm gonna do this is, I'm just gonna describe like what you guys see and things like that. Yeah. I'm gonna be tracking some stuff though throughout this conversation, uh -oh. um, just to see how this interaction goes. Um, no one say twerking, please. We don't know the word. We don't know what that means. Yeah, it's, it's the Orgrim. final act of the worm. <laughs> looks you all in, kind of takes you all in in these kind of introductions. He waits for his uh, cobalt assistant to provide the drinks and probably makes some small chatter with you. Like, how are you finding Ash and Rest? Uh, you are traveling here. Um, you do not appear to be citizens, although I see some cauldrons or those who are familiar with Caldra. Um, but how are you finding the town? Very uh, hospitable, I might say. It's uh, It's been quite welcoming. Very, everyone's been very friendly. Good. Have you managed to see, what have you seen in the town so far? Have you managed to explore much or have you come straight here? We went to the House of the Rose, which was oh. beautiful, very well, uh, very well kept. And we enjoyed some of the uh, the offerings they had there, we had a spa. It is wonderful. I must admit, the waters make me feel uh, 10 years younger. You're very blessed to have such a place in your mm. fine city. It's very, very wonderful indeed. Made us feel very at home. Oh, good, good, excellent. Uh, what about anything about the rest of you? How do you feel about Ash and Rest? Oh, well, we hope to stay here maybe a few days longer, at the very least, uh, to, at least to take a, more of a tour of all of the wonderful towers here as well. Yes, it has become something of a competition amongst the, some of the more wealthy and influential to see who can rise up above the walls. Of course, none will reach as high as my Lord Dragon's Palace, but um, the others are allowed to compete as they see fit. Um, but yeah, no, of good. course, such a beautiful sight along the skyline. It is, yes. It is. Uh, as fitting for a noble hero of, of the Empire. Um, he kind of looks around. Um, he kind of sees you being a little bit quiet and will kind of like loom in on you, Daisy. You there, my dear, you are Cauldron. Yes. Where are you from? Good are you from Northvale? Good fight. Ah, in the Heart Dales, uh, uh, Her Majesty Infernia's uh, realm. Uh, well, I hope that you enjoy your time here in my Duke's lands. Uh, have you been to um, Ashenrest before? No, this is the biggest place I've ever been. Ah, Goodvine is a smaller village then. Yes, oh, yes, I yes. See. Very this good. is uh, there's so much happening. There's so many shops and 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 places to eat and drink. Yes, we are very for very fortunate to be very prosperous, and uh, the Duke is uh, very proud. Uh, of the town. Very good. And you kind of look over to Rowan. Uh, the two of you seem you have travelled from quite far, judging by, um, and 
you notice that his eyes linger upon the slightly threadbare knees and the loose stitching and the the dust of the cobblestone streets that Rowan has <laughs> acquired upon himself. Well traveled. Uh, I, I am Griffith from a little village called Tremoro in Iceheart. I've been on the road now for some time. Good, Iceheart, quite a long way to come. And you, my tall fellow. Greetings. It is a real honor to be here. I am, I travel too. Yes, I can <laughs> see that, I can see. Yes. It is, um, we do not have many Yotnir who visit us here, uh, being quite far from the coast, uh, but uh, it's always a pleasure to have many citizens of the Empire visit our place, and I'm sure that there are a few of, a few of you around. Um, he sort of finishes up making the small talk. You have a favor. I... Who gave it to you? Fuck. Oh. Uh, Inquisitor uh, Tekis. Tekis. Inquisitor Tekis does not have the authority to provide any. No, it was. Uh, it was on authority of his superior, uh, Captain Lucas Vaccaro. Ah, Captain Vaccaro. That makes sense. May I see the favor? I here it is. Hold it out and just gentle, just gen a gentle tug. For podcast <laughs> listeners, I'm going to. Do you have a scroll case? <laughs> and a real writ. <laughs> well, it does. So he kind of pulls it out. And he reads it out. The bearer of this favor, Captain Lucas Vicari. I'll show it off to the camera there. I did it. Kim did the writing. There is a bit more Trump on the top as well. But... No, 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 there's not. Yeah, there is. <laughs> there is. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little fancy bit that says writ of favor at the top. Yeah, I can't, it's, I don't want to break it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yes, he will read that out. I'm just gonna leave that as it is for now. Yep. Lovely. <sighs> he analyzes the favor uh, agonizingly, slowly kind of casts his eyes over. He pulls out a small pair of reading glasses, he places them on, reads over it. Well, this is indeed one of the Duke's favor, given by, uh, given out to some of our captains to reward those who do great things in the Duke's name. May I ask the tale of how you came by it? What service did you provide, my, my Lord Ignorius? Why tell the tale when we could have this man sing it? <laughs> no, I don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, internal role. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming. Uh, um, I, I wait for literally anyone else to start the story, if anyone does. Uh, yeah, so you don't have to fully tell the story, um, because it's going to come down to how good of a storyteller you are. Uh, whoever recites the tale of it will be making a performance check. Um, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. By all means, make the fact that Rowan is a bard. He is good at telling stories. Um, so, Rowan, you begin to retell the tale of what happened in Burnell. Can you make a is this performance a, um, check? Is this a help this? situation at all? Uh, you can certainly attempt to provide help. I think yeah. uh, I would attempt to... I'm going to say you can only help if you're proficient in performance. Because otherwise, how could you help enhance the story? Almost, well... Well, you tell thinking, me, you tell me. My thinking is that... You, how like flowery is this story that you're telling? Like how Im much of an embellishment? Um, no, he, he doesn't lie or embellish. Okay, but he just tells it in a nice, an interesting way. Like he's engaging way. and like and, um, when Rowan becomes creative mm. like that, mm. seeing from uh, mm -hmm. Raven from Black yeah. Wolf. Okay, well, I all I was thinking in terms of help would be that if there was any like fact you were missing, but if you are telling the entire story and it is compelling, then I won't even assist. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say so. Like, yeah, maybe instead of performance, if you'd be if you have proficiency in like deception and you wanted to like <laughs> literally like add lies about how impressive it was. Oh no, no, not lies. It was more that. to okay. just if there was anything that Rowan's missing. No, in no. The story. I think like Rowan's just doing that thing of like, yeah, you don't need to embellish because Rowan is such an engaging storyteller. Okay. Like he. Clearly clearly is caught up in the memories and you paint such an evocative picture with your words that, yeah, give me the performance check and we'll see how good take this luck. can be. No, I was going to say. <laughs> I was, was going to say, say take luck. luck. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's a natural one. Yeah. I thought it was a one. Uh, but it is a 
performance, so that's plus four, 11. Uh, 11, okay. okay. Um, yeah. You see that Consider Orgrim is not as engrossed in the story as perhaps like you were, we would hope to see. Okay. He listens patiently, nodding along, um, but he does not seem to care for the sort of narrative and the music I think and Rowan like also that. focuses more on like the trees and plants and rivers sure. that were alongside the things that we were doing. I and, get and, a little side And I think Orgrim with... probably is like, if you could please focus on oh, the so actions sorry. and it like does that. Yes. So you can see that, um, you know, his patience wanes a little bit with this storytelling, but he does get to the end of it. He says, well, it seems that you have done uh, great service in the name of my Duke Ignarius. And uh, I think that it is very appropriate that you have been given this favor. Um, and I'm sure that at, uh, at the public, uh, audience, uh, you could be permitted to present this to him, and um, a, uh, a favor could be provided. Um, the, the next public audience is quite busy, unfortunately. We've had many people who have asked to see the Duke on that day. I would recommend you um, come back at the next passing. That would literally be a month's time, is what he's saying right now. Uh, the, the next pass, and uh, now forgive me, um, I don't mean to heighten the uh, powers of the Duke's favour, but would this not grant us an audience at the next? Uh, you see, kind of does that, like, mm, make a persuasion check for me. Crucible! Give me one of those. Uh, what was it? Persuasion, Well, sorry. just use your ND6 and I'll just swap a dice oh, up sure, for now. Yeah, yeah. Until we've got an easier way of sharing these around. <laughs> cool. Um, I might buy another set, give you all <laughs> one of each, and then we can just swap them oh, out on the thing. It's not. I thought it was a one. Uh, it's a seven. <laughs> plus three, thing. plus... Uh, so I got a uh, twelve. Twelve, okay. Might be... Yeah, it's not bad. It's above average. That is. Um, uh, but yeah, basically, like... Would this allow us to meet with the Duke at the next? He kind of like looks you over, and there's probably more to it. It's not, not, you say those words, there's probably a bit of back and forth where he does this. Well, there's a lot of people to see the Duke. He's very busy dragon. Mm. Um, but you eventually think that you've kind of won him over. He's just like, well, it is a very bold and brave thing that you've done. I'm sure that you could come in. And, and you're not asking for too much. You're just saying, could we not come at the next passing? Which I think yeah. is in two days' time. Okay. Um, and he's like, well, the next part... The next public audience will be in two days' time. I'm sure that we can make room for you to oh, do that. Oh, that would be much appreciated. I um, would promise not to take too much of his time. That would be uh, most appreciated. Uh, with that, can you just roll again? Can you, as if you had advantage on that per uh, persuasion check? Oh, uh, uh, yes. With the d6 as well, or? Uh, just the d20 part of it. I remember the, what was it, three? Fucking natural 20 again. Jesus. My fifth roll, I've got three. Holy crap. This dice swear. is cooked. Um, Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say as well, at any point, if anybody wants to make any insight checks to pick up on the considerates, like, you know, why is he reacting this way or, like, you know, what's going on with him, um, you are more than welcome to do that. Same way, if you want to jump out in with spells or abilities or skill checks, please feel free. Oh, wait, am I doing this too? Or? Uh, no, because you're engaging him in the sure, conversation. Yeah, yeah. You can't read him at the same time in that way. Um, Six from me. No, no, no yeah. never mind. <laughs> What'd you get? Yes, five. Okay. I'm rolling that poop Thirteen today. on inside. Thirteen on inside? Okay. Anything better over here? Six. Six. All six. Rowan didn't roll. Um, Daisy, with a 13, um, you can tell a couple of things. Um, as soon as, uh, as soon as Xanthius is acting quite respectful towards the Duke, I, I won't take too much of his time. We know that his time is so important. Orgrim warms up to that. There's definitely a sense of like, he he approves of that kind of like interaction, right. right? You get the impression that if you're being respectful to the Duke, that's something, or like being friendly and, and considerate of the Duke, he seems to appreciate that very much. You can also tell that his patience is starting to wane. You see him like looking at his cobbled mm -hmm. assistant. He like pulls out a notebook and he's like checking a timetable and a schedule. You know, like when you're an Im impatient yeah. to like get going, he's kind of doing those signs of like <laughs> tapping his foot and sort of like <clears throat> making, you know, getting ready as if like, you know, I, I need to get on with other things. Like his patience is losing. Like, you're you're losing his patience. <laughs> the, the, well, <laughs> you're, you're getting to that point. Um, you're not sure how 
how close he is to that, but you're definitely kind of losing his interest a little bit. But he, he turns around, and with that natural 20, he will say, we can most certainly make sure that there is time in the next, uh, you know, I, I would love to be able to invite you to speak with the Duke privately, but oh, totally he is understood. a very busy dragon, and there is many matters that need to be looked into. Um, and he does, like, sort of turn the favor over in his hands. And, of course, I'm led to believe that uh, such fine citizens would never dream of forgery or anything of the like. This is a legitimate... I might need to check in with Captain Vaccaro that this is legitimate. Oh, please uh, do, please. And he should be back before the uh, the public audience, but uh, we will need to verify it before... Uh, will the Duke have uh, received the... Uh, Report. report about what happened in, in Bernal? Provided that, uh, if uh, did Captain Vaccaro send any of his men back with you to provide a, a report on it or, or any of the like? He yeah. sent Tekis with us. Yeah, Tekis and... Zaron Tekis, the Authoritor. Oh, very well, I can send for Zaron Tekis and we can ensure... We've not heard anything so far, but... Uh... Ah, okay. Um... Well, that would be much appreciated. And what sort of time would that be in two days, did you say? I would... <laughs> I must say, I hope that it will be within the next two days. You know, things change. Things change. Um, Are there any other matters that maybe we could help with while we're in town? I, there are likely many private citizens who would appreciate your assistance. There are always things to do for travelers and mercenaries and the like. Um, I'm sure that there are various things that you could attend to whilst you are here. Um, we are a very prosperous and busy town. I'm, in terms of things that the Duke requires to be done, I think that that might be a matter to discuss after your audience once the writ has been provided. Um, there are some matters that I think your skills that you've displayed in Burnell may be of use to his draconic majesty, um, but that will be for a post ceremony, I think, a discussion to have. But yes, by certainly means, by the more help you can do here in Ash and Rest, well, the Duke would be greatly appreciative of such matters, uh, for certain. Um, yes. Okay, well... I think we've got everything that we need then. Yes, you have been very useful. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for... Uh, this has been uh, very pleasant, and I'm pleased to make your acquaintance, and for being rather prompt with your business as well. Um, and he will get up, and he will shake your hands. He'll go around, and he'll shake everyone's hands. Um, he looks at Percival and goes to shake Percival's hand. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry, no, he's... um. He's under my command. He tends to, um, he's, he keeps himself to himself. But I, he, you will bow, won't you, Percival, for a considerate uh, Algram? Percival will absolutely bow, but I am going to need <laughs> either a... You haven't technically lied, but there is definitely a kind of effort to dissuade him here. So this is probably going to be a deception check from Ophelia. Can I have a dice, please? Yeah, you can absolutely <laughs> spend uh, one of your dice. <laughs> and then you get a d6 on top as well. 13 total. Is that with the d6? That's with the d6. All right. I'm going to spend one of mine <laughs> <laughs> on an insight check. Please. Natural one. <laughs> oh, oh! I live! <laughs> uh, he looks a little put out, so I am going to. Like Apologies, it's purely it's purely no, a from the course. house of blood. I'm uh, so sorry. Some custom. No, no, it is it is fine. And he nods towards Percival's bow, um, and he says, "Well, good day to you, travelers. Uh, I will uh, guards if you can see them out, uh, and then he will uh, he will call over to." Uh, my apologies, I have to check the name of the... Uh, Blippi It's uh, paid to... Kikshi. Uh, Kikshi, uh, please. And he calls to the kobold, and they will oh. make their way out. And the guard will escort you out. Um, okay. Uh, but yes, so, uh, you have uh, an opportunity in two days' time um, to go to the public audience. Uh, this is basically... You've seen it probably in those kind of in fancy movies and TV shows when the king sits in the throne room and people come up and go, oh, king, I've got a problem, please help it. Yeah, and then people yeah. come up. It's going to be one of those. With the draconic nobles in a town of this size, 
expect it to take a long time. Sure. Um, as but, you did, but, you didn't, that... but you didn't press for a private audience, and so that yeah. seemed to be something that the, the, the considerate was far more likely to be like, oh, okay, yeah. Hey, we got the one two days from now instead of a month from now, yeah. so yes. we'll just pray that we get into the line of people that are like, Please, I've shit myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. um, you'll probably, you know, just before he leaves, the considerate and the assistant will probably give you information like, right, be here at, uh, it will probably be very early, like, mm. get here at, like, 6 a.m. No. Like, yeah, it's like, get here at, like, 6, 7 a.m., <laughs> queue up, and you will be seen when you are seen. Um, okay. But there is uh, a small benefit in that this is a public uh, audience, so you will, the public of the town will see you present the writ, and it will actually be something that people in the town will know that you have earned this Duke's favour. Okay. Um, so that is maybe a small benefit. Is there, um, so. is this a, a, like a public sort of thing like this? He said it might change. Is, is there like... It was not more yeah, stuff, that but. was more that um, if he does not get a report, like if he does not have the auth authenticity of your favor approved, sure, you ain't getting into that yeah. audience. You has know. he kept it now? Um, they no, he would have handed it back to you. Okay, uh, but he he's seen a report, of it. but they need to know that Captain Vaccaro genuinely did give this to you. Mm, yeah. um, mm. So it will be examined. Like he examined it and he seemed pretty happy with it, um, but you have a feeling that like. If he wanted to, he could be like, no, 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 we haven't had it approved. Right. Okay. So it is a, like, what I was asking is, is, is are there, like, not flyers and stuff around, but almost, like, things there to say? There wouldn't be flyers, because I imagine that the people of Ashen Rest would know this is a regular thing. Sure. Okay. This is, like, a thing that happens every month. Uh, you can, anybody can go up and petition the Duke and say, oh, Duke, please do this thing. Um... Um, you guys, anybody can make a history check for me if you'd like to know a bit more about how that, that process might work. Anybody who comes from a big city, uh, I feel like you'll have disadvantage on this because you are not from here. Anybody who is from a, a city or a town uh, can have advantage on the roll. I think most of you are from villages, though. I just need to get the stank out of these dice. We don't roll big stank. Oh, my no. God. Huge stank in these dice. Oh, I'm gonna roll. Did you roll a 20 again? 19. Oh, Jesus God. Christ! I am You're 14. cooked. Truly, I am become high roll in D&D. 8. 8. TM. 11. 11 for Gruff, Ophelia, Low, and then Dick Pion, Ophelia Boy. No, um, sorry, 19. Xanthius and Rowan, um, yeah, you would probably pick up. You're thinking about this, like, okay, we've got this audience. And then you kind of remember what, Rowan, you would probably remember what Xanthius said about this these guilds, these like influential guilds and like wealthy people. And you've seen that like, you know what society is a bit like. You've seen it maybe in places that you visited. Mm, they might pay people to come and hold positions in the line. So like <laughs> they like the guilds can basically pay people to go like, you go stand in the line and then we're going to swap out with you so we get to get to buy the Duke's time, right? It's, capitalism ruins everything. Um, <laughs> and so Xanthius and you very, like, you're aware, like, you're like, God, yeah, actually, there's a high chance that, like, the guilds might basically try and flood the queue, basically, with their own people right. and pay for the most amount of time to see the Duke, right? Um, so there's this thing of, like, oh, my, we're, maybe we're going to have to kind of fight for our position in this audience, basically. Okay. Okay. Um, um, but I don't have a, like an understanding of almost the elevation of this writ of favor. Like if we go into the line, mm -hmm. six a.m. or whatever, we can't just say like, "Sorry, writ, writ of favor, guys. No. Sorry, excuse me." No. <laughs> no, it won't mean anything to anybody else. The writ of favor is basically a case of like you have performed a service, um, a great service, a brave service, a heroic service, um, bang and top end service. Top end service. Um, you've been given this thing, and this basically entreats the Duke will reward you. This is basically a promise of like the Duke will give you a cool reward, yeah. like well done you, good on you yeah are we like asking him for anything or is it like he's just gonna you can us? certainly yeah i mean like the tradition is that with a draconic noble if they give you a favor um you can ask for something mm -hmm. sometimes that can be seen as maybe a bit presumptuous or rude often it is a my glorious duke or duchess i have a favor but, you know and they will they will tell you what the reward is and you go thank you very much <laughs> um but if you were to say you know my duke we have this favor we would like this mm -hmm. You could certainly try. Yeah, because I feel like... And that's right not necessarily now. a bad thing, but it, it, yeah. the, depending on the dragon, they might be like, oh, 
bit of an upstart. Like, you're not supposed yeah. to ask for something. Yeah. I give you something. And you like it. Yeah, and you yeah. like it. There's, 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 like, they are, they are nobles. They are used to a certain way, and they are these crazy powerful magical beings of you know especially here in Kaldra where they're very proud and they can be a little arrogant and they can be a little bit you know facetious and mm. things like that five Parker pens <laughs> <laughs> I present to you five Parker pens and a celebratory mug well done <laughs> here's a t-shirt I helped the Duke and I got all I got was this lousy t-shirt Duke um, Higgy's favourite right yeah but I would say that it is tradition that these writs of favours are normally significant you are talking Talking about a, a large amount of gold, a relic like a magical weapon, or a, or a, or a very elaborate magical weapon, or even land. Like sometimes the duke will give you like, hey, you now own this property, or like, hey, here's a chunk of land, it's yours now, um, and okay. that's that's generally seen as a pretty cool thing, like to be given because you don't pay tithing tax, you don't pay the tithe on it, you are given it by the duke himself. Is it the same Ooh, as buying land in Scotland? <laughs> Like or no, the, on the moon. Oh, it's like you <laughs> get the, 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 the Lord, blah, yeah. Lord, Chris Charles. Oh, no, right. yeah. no. No. <laughs> no, this is like <laughs> how it used to be done here. like back in the day. This is like a proper, like, cool, this farm is now yours. I can't do anything about it. Like, it's that kind of lord mm. land. It may have been blighted in the last war and, like, nothing grows there, but it's yours! And and there is definitely, <laughs> gruff, gruff, perhaps the wisdom of Iceheart <laughs> does remind you that, like, they're not just going to give you the best land. There, there's normally a there's <laughs> yeah. normally yeah. 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 land. Here's this wonderful watchtower. It's a bit of a ruin and it's infested crafty. with oozes. <laughs> but if you go and clear all the oozes out, it's yours. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or they might be like, here's a magic sword. It does have a bit of a curse, but if you get rid of the curse, <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but um, also with this writ, like this, it's granted to us. As a group, right? Like we can't necessarily it's individually. What it says is what it says. It's right. What yeah. it, it says the bearer, the bearer of this writ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh. Somebody now, could steal this. Somebody could absolutely steal this, mm. and that is maybe a dawning moment that uh, descends upon you. And we just gave it to him. Uh, no, you do have it back. Oh, we do have it back. Yeah, okay. I'm going to say I that think. you do give it back. It's also the considerate. The considerate so. is like a, a very highly prized yeah, yeah. position. He could be corrupt. Sort of he absolutely could be, but this Orgrim seemed to be legitimate. Yeah, um, but what I mean is, it, when we go into this this um, public hearing, I suppose don't we flash we can't it back. just well. <laughs> Firstly, yeah, don't flash it about. Secondly, when we're speaking to the Duke, we can't be like, well, I would like this, uh, Rowan would like this thing. Um, it would basically be you presenting it as a group. You would be yeah. treating yourselves as a single thing, a single unit. I don't make we get one Rowan-sized crown. <laughs> Enough to topple. And like I said, you can ask Ashmore for something, Scotland. but that doesn't mean the Duke is going to give it to you. <laughs> the Duke no, yeah, will well, decide yeah. what you get. Um, um, but yeah. Focus. I just spat everywhere. <laughs> uh, that, that whole conversation, the waiting, <laughs> the conversation outside, maybe took about an hour's worth of game time, and it is now properly night time. And as you come out of the gatehouse, you see Ashen rest before you. As you are up on the hill, you are kind of like on the elevated part of it, you see the city is illuminated by these, all of these lanterns. Like imagine if you, I don't know if you've ever been to a city where you have like the old street lights, mm -hmm. you know, and they have that dull kind of like nice amber glow and it just spills on the stones and in amongst everywhere. And it does create these areas of shadows, but there are so many of them, it is like a kind of almost modern city, mm. right? And you see that many of those elite towers, the, the larger towers, the Pharos, the big tower with the illuminating, the illusory dragons around the, t the coil of the Empress, even Ravenstar Spire itself has these other magical glows to it. And it does create this kind of very unique visual image as you begin to make your way back down into Ash and Rest. Um, and that is where we're gonna take our first break okay. at the end of hey, here, right. part one. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody at home. We're going to take a quick five-minute break. Yeah. And we'll be back, and we'll see you in part two. See you next time. Bye. 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 Oh, very nice. What a lovely little part one. Some mm. good some good lols. Some, <laughs> some great lols. Lore. Uh, lore. Much lore. I really like the light guild. Dancing. Mm. Yeah. Lamplighters guild, yeah. Lamplighters Not guild. the only one in, in town. There are other guilds here as well. Um, but yeah, we are going to take a five minute break. I believe we have a new fan art video. We Holy shit. Oh. Huge thank you to 
thanks to everyone that sent art in. Please continue to spam our Discord with yep. your wonderful art and, and cosplay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cosplay, art, post it on social media as well, but the oh, yeah. best way to do it is always sharing the Discord because when we always definitely see it. And as, um, a, as a plea for the man that assembles the fan art, anytime you post art, uh, it doesn't matter if you post one or a million, um, put a little credit in every post because that's just how I work. There you go. <laughs> how you want to be credited in the video. How you would like to be credited if you've got a handle or a username. Yes. Put it in every post that you want to be in a fan of video. Thank you and enjoy. Mucho All right, we'll see you in after that. We'll see you in about five minutes, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, oh, my Bye. God. <laughs>
Welcome back to part two of Althea the Dragon Empire. Episode nine, I believe. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Episode yeah. nine, yeah. Uh, I've, which I've given the tentative title of The Duke's Favour. Hell yeah. Nice. Not really, um, Daddy. <laughs> when we last left our heroes, they had travelled up to the Dominus Ignarum, the Duke's palace, where they had met with considerate uh, Edath Orgrim, a uh, dwarven considerate who is the Draconic Duke's right claw man. Um, <laughs> uh, and has uh, told our uh, heroes that they can present the writ at a public audience in two days' time. Um, it is night time. Night has fallen upon Ashen Rest. The Lamplighters Guild have made their way through the city streets and have illuminated uh, the streets of the magical lampposts and lanterns. Um, and now we find ourselves asking that wonderful question of, what would you like to do now? So we're going from Dominus Ignorum probably towards the plaza, right? Yeah, the central sure plaza yeah. makes sense. Graf has an idea of what he would like to do. Uh, leave it out because I want to take a picture of it later. Okay. Leave it out. 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 It's more that I wanted to get the old. Um... <laughs> get that map going. <laughs> Fine. Did she take some more painkillers? Oh, no. <laughs> I think it might kill him if he does. He um... might go into the future. <laughs> <laughs> I saw how the campaign ends. <laughs> <laughs> Fire everywhere. Xanthius wasn't there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, like, feel free if you guys want to pass the map around to figure out where you would like to go or anything like that. Graf would like to go to the cathedral and see if he can catch the evening service and also talk to mm -hmm. some knights about nighting. Okay. Is Graf going to go there on his own? or? Uh, he would ponder that aloud to the group and say people are welcome to join if they wish. Oh, well, um, Ophelia, are you planning on going straight to the Grumpy Hog? <gasps> Come and see the magic toad first. Uh, That's where we are staying tonight. That's where you so, are staying. Um, we do have, I mean, I presume we have like a few hours. Is there like a, like, is there just a curfew or something? To, just oh, before we curfew, you know, Most of the businesses will shut, like things like shops and things will start to close now. Yeah. Um, the taverns will be open late. Most of the shrines, like the House of the Rose, will be open till quite late. The Cathedral Hat does have an evening service, but generally after evening service, it generally shuts its doors. Um, and then, yeah, you're kind of, yeah, you, I mean, you're free to do whatever you want, really. Sure. Um, no curfew, but you do have a bedtime. I do. I have yeah. to get my beauty sleep. <laughs> um, Wait, is Gruff enforcing a bedtime? So? I yeah. Uh, the the little lordling needs to go and uh, get get to sleep. Mm. Otherwise, he's very grumpy the next day. Oh, I am ferocious. Very tetchy. Yes, claws, fire breath, that sort of thing. Don't Wait, talk to me. One until premonition, though. Yeah. You must come. See the clever toad. You want to do things with yes. me? Yes. Um. Well, speaking of premonitions, uh, Rowan, you did also display an interest in going elsewhere for... I did, but, you. like, it's becoming nighttime, right? Mm -hmm. So... We are right there, though. We're basically outside this It is. Like, it's sunset. It open? Um, if you're looking over to it from this area, you can't really see, like, an entrance. You're, you know, you're on the hill, you're a street away. But the tower itself has these kind of glowing illusions. It, you, it might be open, you don't know. You, you don't really know anything about the tower, the Coil of the Empress. You were told to go there um, to speak to these individuals, but, yeah, you well, don't really know much about it. I would like to go to the Coil of the Empress, but if we have a couple of days, I can wait till tomorrow. That's okay. Oh, well, I mean, we have a few hours to... I think it's important we go to the Clever Toad. I, I, if you would like to go back to the Clever Toad, now I wouldn't advise spending all of your bronze coins, Rowan, on premonitions. I look through how many coins I have left. Lots? Two. Two bronze left. I don't go spending it all of it. All of it. It would... It, 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 uh, you know? Are you on Indeed. the same page? <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> We still have to get you two cloves, by the way, as well. Oh, yes. fantastic. I can't wait. Oh, it would be wonderful. Don't... Oh, I'm sure. I love shopping. Uh, I will say, Mistress Ophelia, mm -hmm. uh, as a diplomat in these lands, uh, have you caught an evening service yet from, from the, the, the Church of Zion? No, I haven't yet, no. It, it may be worth your time, as you know, to, mm. to see some of the rituals and, and uh, the religious... Blah, 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 mm. Religious <laughs> beliefs. Well put. The people of this land have. Have her, have her, have her. It would be interesting to see, see how cauldrons practice. Okay. I've got so much to squeeze in. Mm, what's okay. to do? 
So is there, are people splitting off? Are we, are you splitting the party? Are people heading, where, what are people doing? You tell me. Okay. Give me, give me an order of things. We go to the service. The service is how long? I mean, you don't know. You've never been to one. Uh, I don't know how long it would be in this place, uh, in, in Ice Heart. It tends to be half hour, not too long even, so. Okay. <clears throat> well, in Cauldra, it takes multiple days. Oh. Mm. I guess Not because true. you have longer evenings here. Yes, exactly. Mm. Four days worth. Is everyone going to accompany Gruff up to Bright Shadow Cathedral? Yeah, I'm trying to think um, if there's anywhere in particular. I, I, I think I'd probably be on of a mind to kill time uh, at the moment, so I'm happy to go anywhere. Have kilos alchemicals. Is that place still open? I would say you probably have enough time to visit like one store if you go now, but you would have to go before going to the service. So the stores, it is sundown, so they are you closing now. -ish. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, and we can also like gloss over. We can be like, cool, pay some money, we skip a day. Like you guys just hang out. Don't forget as well that um, you need to spend basically a week of downtime in a place to get things like your heroic short rest back yeah. to recover from like certain like levels of exhaustion and things like that. Um, there's going to be some other abilities and things like that it's as well, which you're going to take. So far. Yeah, you guys, well, you guys haven't even had a full day here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, so we, it's totally okay to be like, Mark, we just kill time for a few days. I'd be like, totally fine. Mark off the gold of whatever it costs to stay at the, at the tavern. Cool. Um, if you guys are like, we need to make some money, then great, you can go off and do some stuff in the town. Sure. Um, there's also downtime activities like research or making money. Like Rowan as a performer can just be like, I'm going to spend the day making money. Um, yeah, if you want to research, you can fish in the river. Um, you can go and do labor work or research or f make items, that sort of thing. Is there like a city billboard outside Dominus Ignarum or is it elsewhere? There is not a billboard outside Dominus Ignarum. There could be one elsewhere, but not, not in any not of in the, the places central that plaza you have either. found. It's not in the central plaza either. Huh. Um, but it could be somewhere else. Well, we should have the conversation at some point of what we actually intend to use the favor on. Have you thought about that at all? I just presume the Duke was going to give us something shiny. Oh, likely, but there is a potential that they may ask what we would want to use it on, uh, in which case we would we be would wise to have a good them answer. something shiny. A shrine to the Blood Mother! Not that. Great Father! Blood! No. Oh. Something shiny, I mean... A beautiful gem. Yes? Nothing too fancy, of course, but that's Just some, shiny. Something of monetary value is what you're hoping for. No. No? A gem to keep? A gem that radiates warmth and kindness. What about you, Graf? I don't think there's anything the Duke can give me. My quest is to become a knight. Mm. And what would you assist you in becoming a knight? Well, to find this order, which is why I'm going to the church to go and speak to the Holy Knights there to see if they know anything about this order that I'm looking for. Okay. But I don't want to ask the Duke's favor in that because I have to earn my right to be a knight. Oh, no, I understand, but... I don't want to be jumping the queue. But know? it would be easier with a nice piece of armor, a big sword, uh, a helmet, there you know, that sort of nice thing. nice things in that Dante shop. Maybe that's something you might be able to request. I think Gruff drooled a little bit looking in that window the other day. Look, it was only a little bit and I wiped it up afterwards. Maybe he could grant me an audience. your head and it sprayed everywhere. Maybe he could uh, uh, grant me an audience with Sir Griold Stieli. Oh, he was so dreamy. I mean, that, that is almost a given, as, the, as Sir Griold is one of the knights of the realm. He is one of the Duke's knights. He was quite impressive. So there is that. But uh, I, I just thought it'd be good to ask what... Well, it's more a question of what's everyone's plans. I mean, we're, we're here, we've got the fate, we've got going two to days. The church. We're going I'm to going the church to right the now. going to the knights Long if they've heard of this... Where do you see yourself in three days? A in, knight. In ten days. Sat on a worm with some great armour. In ten days? And a, a bard singing my song. In ten? We have one Oh, of ten days, sorry. I thought you said <laughs> ten years. No, ten days. Oh, no. What do we do after we receive the favour? We've helped people in Burnell. We've helped people even here at the baths. I wouldn't mind seeing this tournament. Uh, <gasps> when is the yeah. tournament? A few days. First day of Bronze Glow. And what is it now? <laughs> Not Bronze Glow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I believe we were told 10 days to the tournament. 
first day of Bronze Glow. <laughs> About ten days. Okay. Right, and it's so in ten would days' you like time. To know what day it is now? It's currently twenty-one of pre-Bronze Glow. No, uh, <laughs> it is. Da, 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 da. Uh, it is the third of late moon in Stormfall is the name of the passing you are currently in. And the first of Bronze Glow is in approximately ten days' time. Third of what now again? Is the third late moon of Stormfall. So it's 13 days of Stormfall. Uh, no. <laughs> the, there are... Uh, 10 days. Because... Wait. Before? So each passing in the world, a passing is basically a month of this, um, each passing is divided into three moons, uh, blah, 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 um, uh, or phases, so you have first moon, mid moon, and late moon. Right. Uh, and there are 12 days in each moon phase. So there's actually 36 days. So it's 36 days, and so all the months are split into thirds? Yes. Right. Okay. I have a whole calendar I wrote out I'm and I'm sure designed, you do. <laughs> and I've labelled it and it has special days and I have holidays and all sorts of things. <laughs> and I'm very pleased with it. And how many yeah, months are you? Yeah. Um, but no, you are, so yeah, it is the late moon, which is the third moon phase of a, of a passing. You are currently in late moon and it is the third day of late moon in Stormfall, which is the second passing of the year. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. And the next one is Bronze The third act of Stormfall. They also they also have draconic names, but you don't know them. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, actually, no, yeah, you speak draconic, right? I uh, yeah, I do. Uh, so you would uh, so Stormfall is called uh, Aziranus, uh, is the name of the passing, mm. but yeah, it is right, more commonly called Stormfall. No. Azir Anus. <laughs> Azir Anus. Right. Azir Anus. Where do you see yourself in ten days' time, Lord Xanthius? Hmm. Well, I suppose, still here, maybe? Why do you sound so surprised by that? I Well, I, I put as much thought into that question as you all have. Well, I know where I'm going. I'm going Could to be in the tournament. You're going to the tournament. Whilst we're chatting. Absolutely. Yeah, it's the yeah. Yeah. If you go to the service, you won't have time to go to the shops today, but you can always do that. We'll we'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You guys make your way over to uh, Bright Shadow Cathedral. I'm almost passing. It takes you a little bit of time. It takes you about sort of, 30 minutes, 35 minutes, 40 minutes to get there. So you have mm. to trek basically across to the other yeah, side yeah, yeah. of Ash and Rest. Um, and there is another smaller hill. It's not quite as tall as the hill that the Dominus Ignarum is built oh, on, but there are stairs that lead up and the great Bright Shadow Cathedral looms before you. Bright Shadow Cathedral um, is built from polished ash stone, but also black obsidian, and creates this very stark, ecliptic-like nature. Um, there are golden filigrees and silver filigrees to give it an air of uh, richness and elegance, but the stark black and white stone is designed in a way that makes the shadows of the building look even deeper and more imposing, as the recessed parts of the outer building are made from this black polished obsidian, and so they almost look like they kind of pool in, uh, the shadows just absorb all of the light. Whereas the outer areas of the white, the polished white ash stone, reflect any light that they can see, making them almost glow in a kind of luminous mm. radiance creating this very magical looking place. As you make your way up there, you begin to see that a large contingent of the town have left their homes or businesses and are making their way up to the cathedral as well. Um, there is a bell tower and you can begin to hear several chimes indicating that a service is going to be taking place. Um, you soon join a crowd and you find yourselves sort of shoulder to shoulder with many citizens here of Ash and Rest, visiting cauldrons and visitors from other provinces as well who have all come. Um, all of them, uh, as they make their way up, you can see that most of them have donned either a shawl or a cloak or a hood of some kind of black or dark blue or a deep purple, a kind of shadowy color, sometimes trimmed in silver or white. Um, and most of them bear the emblem, um, the kind of very thin crescent moon uh, with a pair of eyes, uh, the symbol of Melia, the mistress of the shadowed moon, um, one of the two scions of Althea. The okay. two remaining goddesses who defeated the sovereign and imprisoned sovereign within the crown 
and basically save the world. The service itself, as you begin making your way inside Rowan, mm. you would pick up, perhaps before anybody else, and you tell me how Rowan feels about this, but a beautiful piece of choral music and stringed instruments is being played within. Um, and it is soft and delicate. It evokes imagery of the moon, of nighttime, of whispers, um, of secret meetings. Um, and this, this choir and this stringed orchestra kind of play as people begin filtering in. Um, you can see those of you who are kind of like not listening but focusing more on the visuals. Um, as people filter in and make their way, there is a large uh, fountain uh, at the start um, and people wash their hands and they wash their mouths as well. They kind of rinse their mouths um, with like splashing the water onto it and then let the water dry. They don't like, you know, rinse it back into the water or spit or anything. They just let the water dry on their lips. Um, and uh, you see that they also go over to um, a sort of wired rack wall and pull out pieces of parchment and little pencils, kind of like simple wooden pencils. Um, and they tear off a piece of the parchment and they take one of these pencils and then they go and take a seat. Uh, in the great cathedral and we're talking like a very classic english cathedral rows of pews big kind of um pulpit um with the sort of uh the i can't remember the name of it the bit at the back altar oh yeah altar um, it's not quite right but yeah, but you kind of get that impression. Um, we huge see ceiling. huge ceiling. Um, you can see that there is a kind of like a, a balcony with like a secondary floor that seems to be cloistered off. There are also stained glass windows that depict the creation of Althea. Um, they focus more on the Scion's role in uh, Althea's... Althea being saved. They focus less on the creation of the world by Sovereign and the Scions and more on the imprisonment of Sovereign within the Crown. They focus on the Scions, Melia and Pyrus, both saving the kind of living creatures of the world, both beasts and humanoids. Um, they focus on the ascendancy of the saints. You can see that all of the saints are depicted in some form here in some part of the stained glass windows, normally telling the ending part of their story where they are ascended to sainthood by either Pyrrhus or Maelir. There is also maybe one singular large framed stained glass, glass window in a prominent place which celebrates the role of Ulfe, the third of the scions who gave their body and gave their spirit to heal the land, uh, with Pyrrhus becoming the sun and Mele becoming the moon. Um, and there is a kind of tribute to Ulfe, who is not really worshipped as a god. In, in, in the religion of the scions, Ulfe is dead. They gave their life to basically heal the land. Um, but Pyrrhus and Mele remain as the protectors, as the watchers. Um, always one watching over the crown. The sun, uh, which is sometimes called Pyrus's fortress, as it is meant to be a realm. It's not like the sun, like we know the sun. Sure. The sun in this, in Althea, is literally like a fortress planet that is full of like angels and fire elementals and sort of things like that. Right. And then the moon is the same thing. It's like full of like actual creatures and it is like a, a floating bastion. It is like still a round thing, but it is like a a world of, you know, their, their creation. Can we go um, there? So it's, is it we'll close? Go Let's go there. Well, at least well, obviously closer than the sun to us, but... It, it, in terms of where how big it is in the sky, it looks the same as, like, the sun and the moon. Yeah. Um, magic being magic, there is no real idea of how far away or that close right. that is. Um, but basically, it's... One is always orbiting Althea, keeping watch over the crown as it breaks away. So there is always the sun or the moon that is keeping an ever vigilant eye on where they imprisoned their creator, their father, the sovereign, uh, their parent, I should say. I want to go there. Um, I want to go there. I the go there. <laughs> service. Who wants to go to space again? <laughs> what else is near? <laughs> Rome will grip whoever's nearby and mm -hmm. stand still, and whoever that is would look up at Rowan as it seems like he's desperately trying to hold something in on his face. Like okay. he's sucking in like he's had a lemon or something like that. And then he just starts bawling. Oh, he just starts so crying. It's so majestic <laughs> and beautiful. As, yeah, who, who is near Rowan? Well, who, who does Rowan grab? Any volunteers? 
I imagine we're sticking together as a group. Like sure. We're in quite sure. a Could quite be thick anyone. crowd of people here. Yeah. So as as uh, one, a a priest uh, dressed in the black and silvery robes of Melir, probably dark blue and purple hues in there as well, almost gossamer-like in their robe, um, sees you crying uh, and just comes up and sort of smiles softly and says, it is beautiful, my son, it is beautiful. Uh, uh, enjoy it. Uh, let let the tears flow. Let the bl- let the beauty. In- <laughs> 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 oh. And they yeah. and they Lord almost <laughs> kind of like put their arm on your shoulder and just say like, ah oh, yes. And they begin telling you. Very more internal. Tone it down a bit. No, no. Encourages you to fully embrace it. I let it out. Grip mm-hmm. this person and just. Wail yeah. <laughs> down their back mm-hmm. with tears. They probably try and pull a little bit away so it doesn't stain their robes and things like they, that. They cry um, like with Rowan, or they yeah. don't know. They don't cry with <laughs> Rowan. There's no. definitely a kind of like um, a somber kind of like an understanding, an understanding. Yeah. And, and they are just like, oh, it is beautiful, isn't it? I love this piece. They talk to you about it. They basically kind of get the what conversation does, what started. Does it all mean? <laughs> they say, well, it is, it is, we call it the, the song of our mistress, the song of night, the song of beauty. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a, it is a simple, uh, a simple choir, a simple song. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just tell you a little about it. And it's, it's just like, um, what do they call them? Psalms? What's like the holy uh, songs? Like psalms. Hymns. 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 It's yeah. like a hymn. It's a hymn to Melir that talks about, um, it is uh, talking about um, whispering secrets to the night and how they are given to Melir, basically. And how you unburden yourself when you give secrets to the goddess of secrets to the goddess of night you are unburdening yourself of them would um gruff be familiar like not with the size of the tr- the cathedral and all that but would he be familiar with the ritual gruff's like, quite religious right? i imagine like, like yeah he I, I always imagine him as almost like there's a little church just outside the village oh there always would be. and it was just always you just went like you went and like, what you would probably find is actually there's almost a sense of familiar familiarity with gruff in in Ice Heart, in your little village in Tremoro, there is one church and it serves Pyrus, Melia, and all the saints. And that seems to be very similar to here, just on a much grander scale. Mm. Um, in other places that maybe you've traveled through, Pyrus sometimes has her own temple, Melia has her own temple, the saints have their own shrines and things like that. But here, this seems to be a celebration of at least both the scions, at least, mm. um, with the saints being sort of like touched upon. Um, and yeah, I think that these rites, it's all on a bigger scale. But the rites, the paper and the pencil, you know this right. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can even see down by the altar, by the pulpit, there is already the big silvery bowl with a very specially prepared like wood that's been laid out. And Gruff, you of all, I think out of everybody, I think you're the most religious, so maybe you're the one who knows this. Um, but that little strip of paper is during the service and the ceremony, there will be a point where the priestess will call, the priest will call for silence. Everybody writes down a secret. They take it to the bowl in, and in turn, they cast it in it. It will be lit a flame. It will be like a silvery flame. They cast it into that, it burns. And it's said that the secret is then sent up to Melia. And she takes on the burden of that, whatever that secret is, whatever you're holding and, and keeping to yourself. Mm. Um, and that's like a very common rite here in the world yeah. um, and that's that looks like this is what tonight's service is about um, and it might be that on different nights there are different rites and services but tonight is this burning of secrets so I think while Rowan's having his uh, moment, moment um, <laughs> Mr. Ophelia uh, the paper and pencil if you take it during the service there will be a moment where the priest asks you to write down a secret and then we place it in the, the bowl that we, you see over there Okay, and it's burnt would you like to take part in this? I'm, I'll be taking part in this. Oh, not unlike Rowan's fun little game of truth. I suppose. But this is a secret between you and Melia. Do you all take part? Xanthius, are you, are you interested as well? Why not? It has to be true as well. You can't lie. I, you can, but <laughs> it's not. Like the God will yes. know. Yeah, I that's no certainly what you've lie. been taught. Yeah, if you lie, Malia will know. I have no intention of lying. <laughs> <laughs> Inside check. Yeah, I mean, you're doing you want. Daisy, w- would you like to take part as well? Um, no, I'm okay with keeping them here just now. Thank you. Okay. So. 
the service goes underway, kind of like a, like a church service you might expect. Um, everyone takes their seats. Um, a few priests kind of you know go around and check everybody. Uh, there is a little silver bowl that's passed around. Donations, donations, kind of passed around. Um, does anybody give any coins? Yeah, I'd put a golden. Gold, mark yeah. it off. I only have gold denominations and two bronze. And I definitely want to use the two bronze for the toad. For the toad! <laughs> for the toad. So Blasphemous! A gold is going in. All right, sure. I mean, this is completely optional. You, there are, you do see other citizens pass the bowl on without putting any coins in. You see some citizens, you know, handful of silver coins, a gold coin, you know. Rona's paying for the All music. Amounts. Sure. He's transcendent well, right now. Anybody who wants to can mark it off. Um, the service is held by a figure. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you said the service is hell. <laughs> the service is hell. <laughs> the service awful. is held by a figure. <laughs> and I believe this is the first time we've seen one in the campaign. This won't be the first time that you guys have seen this particular ancestry before, but it is the first time we've seen them in the campaign. Okay. Um, and you see that a man takes the altar, the pulpit, and they are beautiful. And I don't necessarily mean in a physical kind of societal what we, you know, you know, handsome jaw or anything like that. Um, in this case, it is something about this man's eyes that make him beautiful in whatever way your character would kind of think of. Like, you know, like the, their eyes are just beautiful and you can think of them that. And it almost seems to... Though their eyes are so radiant, they almost sparkle, they are so intense, and when you almost feel that those eyes are, are for you and you alone, like when you look at them, right? Um, uh, and it almost it blurs away any other imperfections about this person. Like it becomes this such a striking feature that you are just, that they are beautiful, this person, whoever they are. Um, and they have dark kind of purple skin, uh, with a shock of white um, and silver hair. And they are a Nalunari, or a dark elf. Okay. Um, the Nalunari are a, uh, the, or the dark elves, they are sometimes called, but I don't think, I think we would call them dark elves OC, but in character they would always be Nalunari. They're not called like Nalunari. dark elves or, or drag Nalunari. or anything like that. How are we spelling that? N-A-L-U, N-A-R-I, Nalunari. Okay. Um, uh, or deep elf, or, or dark elf, or you know, night elf, that kind of thing. Very similar kind of vibes. Um, I won't go into the full lore of them, but basically, you guys would all know that they are a when the elves came to Althea from the Fey Weald, um, uh, a number of them were very badly cursed from their enemies, and they were basically exiled from their own people uh, out of fear. Um, they basically found a number of dwarves who took them underground where the, the sunlight wouldn't hurt their skin and their eyes and things like that. And it was Melee who found them and undid the curse and gave them great gifts in return. In exchange, the Nalunari are fully devoted to Melee. They do not worship any of the other saints. They do not worship Pyrus. They fully are dedicated to Melia and Melia alone. Um, and part of that gift was an almost supernatural beauty. Almost every Nalunari has something about them that makes them beautiful in some way. Um, but that can be, you know, they come in different body sizes, they come in different body shapes, but there is, you know, it might be a smell, something about them. It, they smell like your favorite thing in the world. And it's almost supernatural in that regard. So when you see these eyes, it is a supernatural thing which is almost captivating your attention. So it's it's always, I guess there's no way of really knowing what anyone else would perceive, but it's always the perfect thing for you yes. is what you see. In a like, small okay. way. Yeah. So it could be that like they might have your perfect figure that you mm. see and like they have a shape or size or whatever that you are just drawn to. It might be their skin is like flawless and has like, you know, it just lures you in with like some sort of mystical property or something. Yeah. Or it could be a favorite smell or it could be that their hair is just always voluminous and thick and shiny. And there's just something about them that makes them like have this natural beauty. For Xanthius, his eyes are mirrors. Sure, yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> Or at least they look like your eyes, and you are just drawn to them. Oh, well, it fits with the prideful thing. Yeah, yeah it does. Um, <laughs> and I've been working on that. <laughs> sure. Um, but you see they take the stage, and they are introduced. Uh, they would introduce themselves. I think that they would say, good, good evening to you all, our children. 
friends, welcome. Uh, for our newcomers, I am High Priest Arden. Uh, Ar- uh, oh, A-R-D-E-N. Hello. <laughs> A-R-D-E-N. And I am the High Priest of Melee here at Bright Shadow Cathedral. Thank you all for joining us for this evening service. Uh, we will begin with a few um, hymns and prayers, um, and then uh, there will be some news from our community here. And there's almost a community hall kind of vibe to this. This is almost going to be like they're going to discuss maybe some things going on in the town, um, you know, announcements of births and weddings and things like that that are upcoming. Um, and then it concludes with this, uh, the burning of the secrets, um, this rite. Um, I won't go into the full prayers and hymns, but mm. it is basically a kind of, you are here for about 45 minutes an hour. Okay. As I, like, look around, I imagine obviously most of the people here are residents yes. and, and things like that. Like, how not enraptured are they with this um, the 45, the entire 45 minutes, but like, you know. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's like a mixed bag. Like, there are some people who are clearly devotees and they are like, Nope, you pay attention and you listen and they sing along with the hymns and right. like they are there. And then you get the people who are like, we have to go to the thing, like, you know, they're brought with their family and like the dad's kind of like, mm-hmm, kind of like miming along whilst the wife is there, kind of like going for it. Or like, you know, King. there's the kids with their grandparents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, like anything, this is a. This is as much a social ritual as that is a yeah, yeah. holy ritual as well. Um, and for Ophelia, I mean, you tell me, but I would imagine that this feels very familiar to yes. Ophelia. Like this ceremony, the fact that you everybody's wearing these kind of like, like I said, everybody <coughs> has like a cloak or a mantle mm. or a, a hood or something like that that is representative of this goddess. The hymns, the singing, the ritual yeah. elements, the bowl, the, like there is so much here that is familiar, I would imagine. Yeah, but like how you, you, yeah, I was going to say, is there anything in particular that like Ophelia's thinking about as all of this is happening or... I think she's just kind of feeling a little bit homesick in a way. Like she, like this whole familiarity is sort of bringing her back to what she knows, and she feels like while well, her she feels like she's been struggling to kind of find her place mm. and find like figure out this new world and trying to make it make sense to her, and mm. she kind of misses just that familiarity of what she knows in mm. a way. Yeah. Um, there's definitely, as you're kind of sat here and, and thinking, there's like almost flashes where you're looking down the pews and the cathedral and the altar and the stained glass. And for you, there's almost like a, in your mind, you can all, almost imagine the throne of the Grave Father mm. at the far end where the Grave Father would normally be sat, you know, in a in their, their kind of uh, statuary position. Um, you can almost imagine the Baroness up in the pulpit delivering the sermon, kind of similar to this priest. One thing I should have made clear, and I do apologize because it's only just dawned on me, as you were drawing up to this cathedral, Percival would stop moving. Mm. Ah. And Percival is unable to step within a certain range of this building. Mm. Like, literally, is just like, and then just stops. And like, almost looks towards you. So we'll kind of flash back a little yeah. bit mm. before they, because yeah. yeah, I would have realized that this is actually a pretty significant yeah. thing that would have happened. And I think Ophelia would be seeing that she would be drawn to the familiar place and mm. be drawn to what she knows but she would not abandon Percival mm. I think she would turn around and guide Percival back down the hill and we would yeah. keep there's probably distance. like benches like there's probably because this is quite a wide space uh, in front of it and there's like little <laughs> pieces of grass and trees and there are like benches nearby mm. so you could be sat looking in and yeah. like the doors are open so you can kind of see and hear what's going but give me an arcana check. Mm, okay, okay. Uh, with advantage. Oh. Uh, Come on, new dice. Unnatural 20. Unnatural 20. Mm. You... You are not necessarily a student of magic in the traditional sense, but you know enough about necromancy and you have probably studied or been told by the Baroness or your teachers about... Althea and the Empire and things like that. Sorry, the Dragon Empire and Ilmera. This has the feeling that there is some sort of warding or forbiddance that Percival cannot cross because Percival is undead. Mm. You are familiar that probably the Baroness 
has similar wards placed around the, you know, the her home and, and the cathedral and things like that to deter spies of the House of Shrouds and the House of Shadows because they are very known for sneaking into places that they shouldn't be. Um, and it feels like a very similar thing to that. Maybe not as specific because yes. that is obviously tailored to incorporeal undead. This feels like just any undead Percival cannot step into it's more that restrictive. space. Uh, with an un- I'd say that this is basically, you don't know this as Ophelia, but for a bit of game perspective, the ground here is hallowed Fine. and he cannot enter hallowed ground. Mm. It is protected against undead. Okay. So I'm yeah. Sorry, Percival. I will I will wait here with you until the service is finished. I won't I won't leave you. Uh Percival Yeah, Percival doesn't have enough to basically <laughs> argue. Like he just like nods his head and just sits down with you, like um waiting for a command. Like, yeah, you know, just uh, you know, Percival is limited in what, you know, he doesn't have a full sentience in a sense, so he just kind of sits there and waits with you. But you can hear the singing, you can see everything going on. Um yeah. But uh, I, I guess, like, yeah, and so, yeah, a little bit of a retcon on there, but that, yeah, that's an important cool. distinction. I think I for us, that it's that not that we've actively, like, I forgotten that Ophelia no, no, no. was there. I imagine in amongst this moving crowd, you were probably at the back, like, you've just gotten lost in the crowd as far as... Well, I imagine you almost had that thing, right, if in the crowd, Percival suddenly stops as you get too close, you and, filter and, around and, and Ophelia's like, come on, and he's like, I can't, and then that kind of, you get dragged forward, and you guys have to, you know, kind of linger and be like, oh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll come back, and we'll see you inside, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Okay. That's cool. Makes sense. I mean, yeah, it does make sense, doesn't it? It's a shame because there's this, there's, there's this, and I almost feel that there's this, this quite sad scene where like we can see how much Ophelia wants to go inside, but this calling, this this part of your homeland, showing the difference between the cultures here. Yeah. You know, that this why should Percival not be allowed to go yeah. in there? It would be be so fitting back in Osseus. The organs would be played by the servants of the House of Bones or the House of Shrouds or the House of, of Rot or anything like that. There would be these figures here to to do this stuff. They would be part of the ceremony. I said House of Rot. Where's the House of Flowers? I want to know the House of Rot. Why is it also the like... House of Rot? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, what are you going to say? Um, I've got my train of thought. It's all right. You can always come back to it. Um... But like comparatively compared to the House of Blood, for mm. example, like how, oh, what was I going to say? No, sorry, come back. I feel, I feel sure, yeah, we can say. just come back to you, no worries. If you think of it, just like give me a signal and I'll come back to it. If, um, if Ophelia's looking like really sad that she can't go in, I think Daisy would be like... Because Daisy um, wasn't that fussed about it, right? If, if you want to go in, I can, I can sit with him. It's, it's okay, because he, he responds to my command, so I don't want him to get stuck. For example, if something were to happen and we'd need to go, he would kind of be stuck. It's okay, you go You go and enjoy it, it's okay. I can hear the singing from out here. Well, I could maybe talk to you and let you know if something went wrong, if you want to go in and then... It's, it's I, okay. I could, no? It's okay, you, you go and enjoy it. Don't worry, don't worry about me, I'll be okay, but thank you. Well, I could sit here with you. Oh, you're more than welcome if you'd like to. I just, Percival's not welcome, so I don't want him to feel alone. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll go with... Trover. You come, you come sit down next to me. Come, come sit down. There's space for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Daisy okay. sits down next to Ophelia, um, as everyone else is sort of In cajoled between inside. Ophelia and Percival. Percival. <laughs> Little tiny halfling on the bench. <laughs> No, sorry, small. I keep saying that. Small human. Mm. Um, you're not a halfling, that's very true. Um, you... She slightly regrets the decision. She didn't think <laughs> she'd be... Yeah. Stuck here. It's like awkward, um, isn't it? You would notice you are not the only ones who don't go to the cathedral. Right? We are not talking about the whole of Ashen's Rest goes to this ceremony. You still see people moving around. You probably even see some people heading back the way you came, um, carrying little statues... Uh, stone statues of the Dragon Empress, and they are heading in the other direction. Um, Fair but uh, just briefly back inside during the ceremony itself, uh, eventually, after a while, we reach that point where uh, the High Priest Arden will say, 
My friends, it is time. Uh, we are going to dim the cathedral lights. I hope that if you've not already written your secret, now is the chance to do it. Uh, we will dim the lights to let you think upon what you've written, what you are committing to, uh, Melir, and then we will ignite the flame and invite you up to send your secrets to our goddess. Uh, and he just nods his head and yeah you have like a few minutes so yeah what i mean are we gonna say out loud what you guys are writing i will say this yeah. i need you to write down what you put okay or at least give it to me in some form okay. so i'm gonna give you a piece of, I, I can give you some pieces of paper so you know if it's yours <laughs> sorry i said i'm glad i didn't go into the cathedral i mean I have it, a these are there's like, a voice in my head <laughs> These are like things that are getting thrown into a pile. Uh, fire. A, well, I, I mean, before even the fire, it's like, or is, is, is it literally we throw it into a fire or we throw it into a pile it is, that then gets you, lit? It is, the fire is lit and then you would throw right. it into the flame and then yeah. it's burnt up. I like fired you. and blamed it on me, Nan. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Down. What a terrible secrets? person. Secrets. Bring out your secrets. Because, uh, the goddess Malia will know what you send, and therefore so does Mark. <laughs> what? My poor old pen. Goddess Malia knows all pen? anyway, so... Do they? Well... Do you pen? <laughs> yeah. Uh... I, oh, I'm torn. I've got three ideas in my head. <laughs> you don't have to take off the little bit of paper. I'm thinking me. about it. Okay. I'm think Well, thinking about what I write. Sure. You mm -hmm. know? Um, and you, there is like hustle and bustle. You kind of hear, you know, murmuring and things as people kind of. Yeah, and some people, um, everybody takes it very seriously. They never share the secret they're writing down. But there is a little bit of like fun, like people kind of jostle, like, "Oh, are you going to write about Susan?" <laughs> oh, shut up! No, I'm not. Like, there's that kind of like jostling around, yeah. of like you know, joking. But everybody does very go silent, and everybody quietly writes down one of these a secret. Okay. Oh, I remembered. Yes, read it while we're waiting. Uh... For the House of Blood, are they, like, welcome to everyone? Like, there's... Um, all of the houses, so in Osseus, all of the houses are technically open to each other and allies. Yeah. But there is that unspoken rivalry and that unspoken mm -hmm. kind of, not conflict, but competition. All of the houses want to be favoured by the Grave Father. And the Grave Father makes it very clear that strong and being cunning and clever and things like that are great things to be and so they are always kind of seeking to outdo each other in different fields mm -hmm. and so yeah the house of blood is open to everybody and so your cathedral will have invited you know people from the other houses that are because the the cities have each of the houses within them in yeah. so if there was a certain festival or a certain special night the house of blood would absolutely open it up oh. and invite people in but i imagine Imagine on the day to day, it would probably mainly just be the House of Blood. Mm. Like it would be members of the House of Blood and acolytes of the House of Blood who are participating. But maybe from time to time, there would be gatherings of all of them. Likewise, you would have visited the House of Bone or the House of Shrouds or the House of Rot. You would have visited those places for their special events and things like that. Um, and, you know, I don't know how Ophelia feels about things, but the House of Rot certainly is a bit more of a visceral and um, smelly kind of uh, involvement. Um, you know, the House of Shrouds is a little bit more spooky and sort of uh, ghosty. Um, and the House of Bones is probably the closest to the House of the Blood. The House of Blood and the House of Bones are very close, but that also makes them the worst rivals. Yeah. They are always, because they are seen as the two great houses. They are seen as the most senior houses. And so there has always been this strong competition to who's going to come out on top. Mm. So, yeah. Don't like fucking look. I'm not looking at it. I feel you go look in the window. Yeah, well, just like kind of scoot up to the cathedral yeah. and pop in. Yeah, really yeah absolutely. Um, so, Daisy. Um, Ophelia kind of like after pining and looking like you see Ophelia get up and sort of scoot over and is like on her tiptoes looking in the windows and like peering in and things like that. Are you sure you don't want to go and just have a little look? It's mm. a lot of text. I'm <laughs> sure it can't. Hurt. Are you going to be okay with Percival? I just want to have a little look. Yeah, he doesn't really, he doesn't say anything, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay. Uh, be, I won't be long. And the feeler will just will scuttle in, just have a look through the door. 
just sort of tend to be like a... I'll sit with Percival, but scoot slightly away from Percival and just look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, for podcast listeners, I fell off my chair. Don't let it fall. <laughs> I just went. <laughs> Yeah, I look forward to reading all of those, and they are going to sit with me. I love that. Um, great. Um, Percival just... You didn't really give Percival command, did you? So he no. will just default to his... He waits. Um, and so you kind of scoot away from him, Daisy, but the the friar's robes, you know, you never really see the skeletal features underneath. Just kind of sits there, silent, still, doesn't move. Percival, do you mind if I do some sketches while you're... Just remains inanimate. Glad you agree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just sit and doodle in my yeah. little sketchbook. Um, and just occasionally just glance at him and make sure he's like... Yeah. OK. Oh, uh, OK. <laughs> the last part of the ceremony is uh, when all is said and done, everybody has gone up and thrown their secret into the fire and uh, takes their seat. High Priest Arden comes back out again and he says, thank you all for committing your secrets to our Mistress of Night. Now let us in one final moment of stillness and darkness reflect on beauty, mystery and secrets. And every light in the cathedral goes out as the flame is snuffed and it is plunged into absolute blackness. So, Ophelia, you just see the whole interior go black. But I can still see, because I've dark... You cannot I see. I can't see. <gasps> is Ophelia awful. is going to get out. If she can't... Like, she is going to It is leave. magical darkness. Yeah, Ophelia is... No, no, no. no. <gasps> so, She's like, never, yeah. you've never seen just absolute darkness no. before, like, black. Um, the rest of you is just suddenly... Vroom, for about five, six, ten seconds, and then vroom, the lights come back up. And everyone kind of has that whispers, 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 murmuring as like the, the ritual is concluded. Um, and yeah, the music begins to softly play a lot softer now and people begin to get up and leave. Some people kind of linger around, maybe hoping to speak to the priest or the high priest. Um, but yeah, uh, I feel like you run back to the I bench. Daisy, <laughs> Daisy, 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 Daisy. Ah! Sorry, sorry, sorry. It went dark, like dark. Okay. What's that? Why? Why did it do that? Uh. When normally when there's no light, I can see. Okay. But it went dark and I couldn't see. Wait. Usually when it's dark, you can see. Yeah, yeah. When it's when it's nighttime, when there's no light, I can. I ha I have low light. I can see. Okay. But it went dark and I couldn't see. <laughs> That's quite normal in this world. So. I don't know if I can help you. Are you scared of the dark? I didn't like. I can light I didn't like up. That. I, I, I'll put light on my dagger and just sit. I mean, that's that's normal dark. light. No, I mean, like it's dark. You can look around, like looking around this place. There are all these magical lights, but where there is darkness, your vision becomes that kind of red gray that you're used to. That like when it's there's no light, you kind of see in those shades of red and gray. And that's what you can see. Like, I almost imagine like a vampire version of dark vision where it's like, instead of being completely gray, there's like a red filter over it. Yeah, definitely. And like, <laughs> yeah, kind of, and you almost, yeah, very, and almost like hearing like the heartbeats, like you see like little pulses of light right. and stuff, you know, well, you little shapes, like predator vision. Um, but yeah, so you can still see that. And so like when Daisy creates the light, that's just like light, you, yeah. you're used to that. But yeah, what you saw in there was not that. <laughs> Oh, I did not like that. That was that was unnatural darkness. Okay, um, Percival's fine now. Oh, good. Thank you for looking after him. That's okay. I, I'm sure it's fine. That's just probably part of the ceremony that they do. Uh, Gruff will tell you about it when you come out. Okay, I will. I will ask Gruff. When when, when Gruff and Rowan come back and Xanthius, they'll be able to tell you what happened. Uh, meanwhile, 
inside. Um, people are beginning to filtering out. What are you guys doing? Like, I think, like, Gruff, you probably want to stick around and, like, ask about these knights. Um, you would definitely see... Um, you probably didn't see them as you were coming in because there were so many people, but there are a couple of armoured-looking figures in here. Um, the two of them are stood near where the high priest was, like, almost like as if on guard. Um, but you see that the front rows, like, right at the front, uh, there is at least one very ornately armoured figure. Um, who looks maybe a little bit more standout than the rest. Um, what about, Grub? before I jump into that, Xanthius and Rowan, is there anything you guys would like to do, or are you guys happy to head out once the service is completed? Um, I think for Xanthius, I think during that darkness, mm. um, I think Xanthius himself would close his eyes, <laughs> and almost as the darkness comes up for everybody else, I still take like a, just a longer moment just to kind of sit in that for a little bit. And there is a moment as you're sat there, Xanthius, with those eyes closed. You don't know why. Maybe it was just what you wrote. Maybe it's just feeling that pressure, that heat in you. You swear for a moment, even though your eyes are closed, it's like feel like someone's looking at you and then the lights come back on and you feel i think <laughs> yeah there's like almost a moment where uh, what, i'm almost thinking that i kind of want to stay in that darkness and uh and allow that feeling of someone looking at me i almost want to be found mm -hmm. and have that thing almost <laughs> do what it needs to do. Sure. Um, well, that, and that is certainly the thought in your head. That's how I'm feeling. So I, I, I would, for just a time, almost Stay try and sat almost sit in the darkness for a little bit longer before I do eventually stand up and uh, make my way out. Nice. All right. What about Rowan? Rowan is going to be uh, going around speaking to everyone and saying, that was wonderful. Did you write a good secret? and uh, hugging people, yeah. crying a little bit, and just like applauding the musicians, um, and just really being embedded. In the moment. In the moment. Yeah, yeah. Just being way but... too close to people. <laughs> sure, <laughs> just give me a persuasion check. Just a straight up charisma persuasion check. Ah, uh, put my dice in here. Don't do that, you need those throughout the whole session. <laughs> you never know when I'm gonna ask you for a roll. 10 plus. Just a straight up... Uh, persuasion. Persuasion, which is four, 14. 14. People like you. Like, it, it's not hard. You go up, you seem so earnest. You ask, people are like, oh, it was a good secret. I can't tell you, obviously, but blah, blah, no, blah. No, don't. Yeah, yeah. Shh, shh. Um, and yeah, you, you get on with people here. And so, like, you, yeah, you strike up idle conversation. People ask about you. And if you're traveling through, you kind of have that, like, lovely moment of just connection with people here. And this does feel, there's a there's a piece, like a, like a being out in the woods at night mm. and just there's a, there is a little bit of a kind of mystery and a little bit almost of like, ooh, it's a bit unusual, a bit maybe a bit danger or a bit mysterious or a bit spooky, but there's also that kind of curiosity and that sort of like, ooh, mm. this is fun and that's kind of got that element to it. Um, yeah. And then Gruffith. Hello. What do you guys want to do? What do you want to do? Uh, if anyone was watching, you'd see Gruff stand up, look at the knights, look around, look at the knights, look around hesitantly smooth his his braids down mm -hmm. kind of um, as you're sort of getting ready and sort of still amping yourself up to go and speak to them, the the armored figure, the one who is a bit more ornately dressed, gets up and turns, and it's just it's just coincidence that your eyes meet. Uh, like, and he kind of looks at you, and you can see. Well, you're not sure if it's a man or a woman. They're very uh, non-binary, sort of like their facial features. You're not you can immediately tell mm -hmm. they are a tiefling. They're a tiefling. Mm -hmm. um, dark, sort of like dusky gray skin. Um, their horns are quite jagged. They almost, they look a little bit scary and a bit intimidating. Oh, and their armor has a blackish hint to it. Um, and you can see that 
in a back scabbard is a enormous flamberge, like the wavy curved sword. And it's like a two-handed with the wavy pattern in the middle, flamberge. Um, I think I'm saying that right. Uh, and it's like in a thing on the back and they'd actually, it's almost custom made. So when they sat down, they kind of twist it and so they can sit down with it and then they can you know, maneuver it back and into place. Mm -hmm. um, and their armor has a section their tail comes out of. You can see that their legs are they're very tall. They must be like six two, six three, um, and their armor almost has a kind of bestial element to it. Like you see, like claws and like sharp, angled edges, and their eyes are almost black, and they turn round and almost match eyes with you. Um, oh bloody hell! <laughs> um, Gruff immediately stiffens. Is very sweaty, but walks up uh, to the knight and nods. Um, Hello. Uh, uh, <clears throat> hello, great sir. Uh, my name is Griffith from Tremorrow. Uh, I, uh, you're a knight. The figure smiles, kind of almost like a bit of a smirk, and you can see quite sharp fang, uh, like vampire fangs more, uh, kind of a sharp fang as they look upon you, almost a little amused, maybe, um, and they will bow their head uh, and say, well, greetings to you, Gruffith of Tremorrow, was it? Aye. I am Sir Morning. Uh, morning spells in Morning the Dead. Yeah. I am Sir Morning. <laughs> Hello, Bree. <laughs> the dead. Yeah. yeah. Bree's yeah. here. That's my yeah. jam. He said something death related. <laughs> yeah. Was he my skull tat? <laughs> I am one of Lady Mistress's knights. Oh, that must be a great honor. Uh, I, uh, if I could perchance have a moment of your time. A moment of my time, not to the. And he almost gestures like you don't want to speak to the high priest, like. Oh, I. I they're very grand. I. Uh, I. I wanted to ask about becoming a knight. I left Tremoro because I wished to pursue the path of becoming a knight. I see. Oh, well, um, unusual. Uh, I am a, sometimes my, we are called holy knights. Um, unlike the knights of the realm who serve the dukes and the duchesses and the draconic nobility, and unlike the knightly orders who are formed under a banner of service or oath of duty. Um, holy knights are called upon by the scions or the saints. Um, uh, I'm afraid that I, I did not seek to become a knight as you do. I was called to it by Melia. My life, my circumstances, the nature of darkness and secrets and mystery and magic have always been a part of my life and it is through that calling that I am now given that title. Uh, I've, uh, I'm, if you have felt a calling into the service of Lady Pyrus or Lady Melia or one of the divine saints, then, then yes, I think that that is always a, it is not a difficult, it's not an easy path. It is a difficult one. Uh, but normally it is revealed through destiny, through fate, through the course of one's life. Uh, I suppose, well, as you can see, I'm I'm an older lad. I've spent most of my life in my village just contributing to my village. A worthy service? I, um, a traveller, though. You speak of destiny. A traveller came through and told me of the Circle of Loyal Hounds. I know of this order, yes. I have heard of them. Um, a knightly order uh, bound into the service of helping those who are in need, but more those who are perhaps older or infirm, but also offering a chance for those who are older who still seek knighthood. Aye, and I think that fits me. It does. I, I don't Suits suppose... Suits you well. <laughs> Thank you. I don't suppose you've heard of them. I'm, I'm struggling to find them. They are not a large order. Their number are few and their cause takes them across all of the Empire, as I understand it. Uh, they are not like the Knights of the Realm who stay in one place. They are rather nomadic, I suppose. They travel where they are needed, 
helping those that they can. I heard that there may be a, a, a headquarters for them, but it is a closely kept secret amongst their order, uh, uh, which is quite common in the knightly orders, I must say, uh, almost like clubs, sometimes to protect the draconic noble who sponsors them. Um, I don't know if you know this, but there is a there is a tournament coming to Ash and Rest, oh, and yeah. it will. Ah, oh, well, I think that such an event might be your best chance of meeting such a knight. Th- such such events call to the knights of the realm and those of knightly orders far more than they call to my type of knight, uh, a holy knight. Um, I will be in attendance. Uh, well, the cathedral likes to send myself and the Knight of the Sun as a. Uh, uh, combatants, we offer a challenge. Knights who can defeat us earn a boon from the cathedral. If you would like, you can always test your metal in that regard as well. Oh, if I, I'm not even a squire. <laughs> I don't have anyone to fight with. The challenge is open to all who would wish to take part. Oh, I would have to think upon that. Thank you. Of course. I think that what, if I may, I, I'm sorry that I cannot help you any further, but uh, it is a noble act what you are doing. People often think of my lady knight as youthful in appearance, but secrets and beauty and mystery are not the realm of the young alone. She does look favorably upon the more vulnerable and the more venerable too. Uh, I think what you are doing is a, a noble cause. Um, I'm sorry that I cannot help you any further with it. Should you, if you would like lessons in swordsmanship or such, I'm happy to offer them. Oh, I'd uh, be honored. Uh, I'm a bit more of a... a Druid myself, I, I must admit, I've never lifted a sword or a, such a magnificent weapon as your own. Uh, and and no, you've done you've done a lot. Like you've given me a moment of your time, and, and I can imagine being a holy knight. You're a busy, busy person. Uh, I find that these days not so much. I am kept here, and I spend much of my days in prayer and meditation, and I read. I have become something more of a. A monk, I suppose. <laughs> I study more than I fight. I try to practice whenever I can, but uh, should the calling be, I am here if Ash and Rest and if the people of this land need me, or if indeed, and he looks up and he um, kind of makes like a, a sort of crescent moon shape over his heart, uh, which is a holy gesture. Um, and if Lady Knight needs me, I am here. Um, I will ask with the Knight of the Sun, obviously, she is not present at this time. It is the night service, but I will I will speak with the Knight of the Sun, see if she knows anything. Um, and uh, where can I find you? Where could I send word to you if I learn of anything? Oh, I'm staying in a place called the Clever Toad. I know it well. I know it Noisy. Well. Yes. Very yes. noisy. But full of life, full of secrets, full of fun. Full of con artists, <laughs> Well, Lady Knight does choose her acolytes uh, from many. Uh, and he s- sort of smiles like, yeah, that's, yep, that <laughs> sounds about right. <laughs> um, but he says, I will send word to you, Gruffith of Tremorrow, if I, if the Knight of the Sun, or if I hear of anything else. Um, we sometimes get word of those knights who are visiting ahead of time. And if I know uh, Knight of the Lower Hounds is, he is coming, I will tell you their name and whatever I can. You do me a great honor, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming to the service. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that whatever secret you sent to Lady Knight is heard, and she takes that burden from you. Oh, I... It would help, I... And he kind of, like, puts a hand on your shoulder. It's like, she will. Good day to you. And to you. He gives you a salute, um, and then, yeah, we head off. Graf kind of walks away a little bit, maybe goes behind a pillar. (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> and then just, yeah, <clears throat> composed, walks up. Perfect. Um, at this point, I think, like, yeah, Xanthius, you would probably, after a little bit of conversation, you kind of come out of that moment, and I think everyone sort of emerges from Brett Bright Shadow Cathedral. You see Ophelia, Percival, and Daisy sat there. Um, how are things, how is Daisy feeling after sort of, you, you've been sat out here for like 45 minutes, like sketching away, but that's a not insignificant amount of time. You know, how's it been? Uh, you know, She's trying to put in the effort to be less scared of Ophelia. So sh- this is why she was like, mm-hmm. okay, 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 you could do it, you could do it. Um, so I think she will probably distract from Ophelia talking about blood and <laughs> death and all of those things by showing her through like her sketchbook or just talking about like some of some of 
um, the things that she knows from Althea that that maybe Ophelia would find interesting. Sure. So she would probably do that, I, I guess, instead. Yeah. Ophelia would. Well, she'll look it down. You'll say, "Oh, you, you're an artist. You draw." I just, I just sometimes I just like to 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 remember little things. <gasps> so that that's how I do it. Um, Fascinating. I've, House of Blood, we love we love the creative arts and we love drawing and painting. I've tried painting. I'm terrible at painting. I can't seem to get the paint to do what I want it to do, but these these are exquisite. I was going to say, yeah, Daisy has a real talent for the illustration. Like, it is, you know, very, very, very good. Something that you could totally see at home in the House of Blood, sort of, like, illustrations, like, in the tomes and books and things. Do you, do you, do you sell them? Do you, ex do you exhibit? Do you, do, what no, do you, you just no. do them? You just, I just, it's just for me, really. You should share them with, with, with everyone. You should frame them, display them, hang them up so people can see them. They're beautiful. Oh, well, I could do one for you if you want. <gasps> you wouldn't. <laughs> I, maybe I would. <gasps> I would be honored. I would love it. <gasps> I'll treasure it forever. OK, I'll, I'll think of something and then I'll, I'll I'll try that. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's so kind of you. And she'll like give you a little hug. Just a really like, awkward, Chill. like, this is how people hug, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you. Oh, this is lovely. Yeah. So you come out to a rather sweet scene of these two really seemingly gruff. getting on quite She's well. She's eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, then from, you, you guys come out and from behind you just see little Daisy in the vice-like grip of Ophelia, her neck very down, like, ah! It's happening! <laughs> As you start drawing plays, and then Daisy's like, yay! <laughs> She's um, turned. Uh, <laughs> I am one. I am um, one of her. Just because I want to get out of the way before the end of the episode, I'm assuming you would like to visit the grum the, the clever toad. We start every episode with the crucible of fate. We end every episode <laughs> with, with a prediction toad. from the clever toad. Uh, so you take Ophelia. Ophelia, they take you to a rather not run down, but perhaps a bit more rustic looking establishment. Mm -hmm. um, you see a couple of sailors stumble out. Uh, they are like you know, arms round of each other, singing. Their mates. One of them trips a little bit and spills his beer on the other one. The immediately he gets shoved off and they start fighting each other. <laughs> you spilled your beer, you asshole! I'll kill you! They start fighting and rolling around. Um, very as they start fighting and like causing a ruckus, you watch as seven little figures in like cloaks come out and just start beating up and bundling them off elsewhere, and then they quickly return um, and make their. Way I back really don't know what tablet. it is I love about this place, but. But something about it just speaks um, to me. And you are led inside, uh, and as you enter, there is uh, a long, long bar with a little sort of barbecue grill, grilling meats and causing little food. All of these, these seven kobolds in matching little uniforms, as you enter, will go, Hey, welcome! <laughs> <laughs> As these little uh, black scaled kobolds, all identical, uh, do that. You can see the place is pretty busy, um, but at the back corner, there is a machine. Uh, a glass box on a wooden stand, upon which, in which, there is a taxidermied, you immediately recognize quite fine taxidermy. No, I said it was quite bad, was didn't bad. I? It was bad. Yeah. It was like badly done taxidermy of a very abnormally large bullfrog, like sickly yellow with like black spots wearing a little wizard's hat and it's got his eyes closed and there is a lever and a coin slot for a coin um, and it does have a little message on the front. Uh, Behold, the clever toad. This is the Ill illustrious... Sit right here. Uh, okay. And I give her two coins. You get two prophecies. That's all I could muster. I'm sorry, I have to get some denominations. Are but you, you put it in there and behold. Okay, I will... Pay the Do you want me to pull? Can I pull the lever? You can, okay, you can pull no, the lever. No, but if you pull the lever, then it'll be your it fortune. Would taint it would be. It. You're right. Oh, you no. pull the lever. How okay, I will be. pull the lever. Here I go. Pull the lever. A little musical tune. Roman sings along. You play this a lot. The yes. little toad's <laughs> eyes open and glow from within, kind of grossly but magically. Mm. Its mouth opens, and a voice projects out of it. Lay the seed of fortune and destiny in the shadow 
of the garden. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> doesn't say that. It doesn't say it's tomorrow. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. So cryptic. Mm. It could mean so many things. Philly and Groff are just like looking at each other, just like, mm, mm. yes, yes. Roman is hastily scrawling this down mm. on his list of premonitions that he's got. Okay. You're really collecting these, aren't you? Uh, are you going to do the other one? I will do the other one. I'll play along. Here I go again. Ooh. <laughs> Same thing Whoa. happens. The eyes light up. The mouth opens. Rejoice. For the dragon shall give great destiny and luck tomorrow. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> if you said in two days, it yeah. would have been. <laughs> yeah. If only. So, are so we, close. We're about to be fortuitous, uh, Rowan. Uh, so long as we that? abide by the other rules of the toad, oh, such just... as the avoid the, the spire's the shadow, beware the noon, but also, I think we also have to embrace the luck that comes at noon as we well. Do, yes, yeah. We need to be aware of archways, archways and their yeah. fortuitousness, but also their negative. But you, you were in the church, right, just now. There's so many archways in the so church. Many. You were just under so many archways. And then growing that sudden realisation, growing. you were panic. under an archway and it went dark in like a shadow. <laughs> Rowan is just, like, stepping away. And with that, that's the final scene as we see <laughs> Rowan's terrified face as the episode Reflected ends. in the glass of the toad. <laughs> <laughs> as the toad's eyes just close and its mouth shut. Goodbye. And, and that open. is going to be the end <laughs> of today's episode. Episode uh, 9, The Duke's Favour. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Very good. Fucking hell. <laughs> well, that is going to be it for today's episode. Thank you all so much for joining us. We are going to do a little bit posting, but that's for non-podcast people. We'll do that other thing. We'll see you next time. Wow. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 I don't want people to think that we got it. Hello. Ooh. Oh, my timing was slightly off. I thought because I thought we were. I thought it was ten minutes to the end. It was actually fifteen minutes to the end. But that's okay. It was a good episode, isn't it? It's ten minutes. To the end. It's ten minutes. To the end. What are you talking about? Two fifty. It's two forty-five on my timer. That's yeah. the how long we've been going. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, I see. So You're it's talking not about the length. Hours, yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about so, it. Hey. We're gonna read some messages. Fuck up. <laughs> um, but hey, great episode. I really like that one. Sorry, really it's there's lots of lore because this is like the first like big city. We're gonna learn about loads of stuff. Yeah. yeah, no, I yeah. mean you're learning about the hub. You're learning about the world. There's a lot of cool deep. stuff to set I, up. I love just picking a random place, going there, and it's just this huge wealth of information. Yeah, like every single part is so colourful and detailed. It's awesome. I'm not done. I can tell... More! I can tell you, Spence. More! <laughs> More! <laughs> More lore. <laughs> this man is I Althea. Mean, this is Kylo Ren in the place. <laughs> More! Oh, that's cool! Yeah. Yeah, it looks yeah, really though. good. You should put that in the middle. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry that poor Ophelia <laughs> couldn't time. go in the cathedral, but I oh, did have that realisation of, like, Percival's a skelly sense. man. Makes if sense. you uh, oh, go yes. on to Katie's Twitter, she, every episode does a drawing yep. for uh, the episode and its current themes. Uh, and this one is... A Duke's writ and the Toad. And they are awesome. They are really cool. So Says favourite, please. Favourite, please. Favourite, please. Favourite, please. Favourite, please. Favourite, please. It's going to be um, such a good little prop at the end uh, of the campaign. Yeah, yeah. and just yeah. filling this book with stuff. Yeah. Is there stuff before we started? Gorge. What? No, not before we started, but last week I did draw an actual toad. Yeah. Well, the toad. Toad. Oh, toad. We also had... <laughs> we also had Un Rit. Uh, like Kim made the paper for Trot. You printed the, yeah. Trot three. You printed the scroll. Yeah, yeah I did, did, the 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 mark, did some. I did some painting on I it. I spray painted it gold. That was my. Costume. You spray painted gold. I did weathering and sort of washing and things Detail. like that and the gems. And, and I inhaled yeah. toxic fumes. Yeah. Oh no. Um, so the classic. And this is this is going to sit 
somewhere in the set. This is going to be bin. like a nice little. Yeah, little we just want to have a nice collection of stuff. We like, like having things, don't we? <laughs> we nice I want to do more of it. I want to do more yeah. of it. I just haven't had the time. I've been sat more. here playing with a yeah. certain deck of cards that I've been waiting for a certain thing. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> you know yeah. what I want. Is it the Oracle? <laughs> yeah. Might be. <laughs> I, I really want. Um, oh, we got these awesome coach. potion bottles. Scales. I haven't bought them yet, so we haven't been to a apothecary yet. No, but we're going to have them out on the table. Yeah. Yes. And then yeah, we're gonna get uh Trot's got a design of the Not crucible. Scales, crucible. That we're gonna have the yeah. crucible, sorry. Two two like elevated platforms. That I'm gonna have permanently on fire. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Great. Bad. Well, uh, I'll need to have <laughs> Do you wanna yeah. read some no, dirty I'm messages? Because I, I think we've got a big one. We have un big un. Um <laughs> before we even started, four days ago, in fact. <laughs> um so way which in between birthday. streams, which was on the Wednesday, yeah. Um Jen Seferum, very generously, one thousand pounds. Yes. Go ahead. More. <laughs> Oh my, my god. Uh, which is like crazy. Not even like during an episode, it's nuts. Um, so thank you very much. That is very generous. Um, and it says, Aha! There you are, simpletons! A little bird has told me it's your birthday today, and I simply had to rush on down in my new automobile to congratulate you. Here, simpletons, have a happening I found between the cushions of my shalong. Farewell. Well, they have freaking oil barrel or something. <laughs> Harpenny. Listen to Harpenny. what they're saying. Harpenny. 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 Oh, peasants. Very yeah. good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very, very, much. Much. very, much. very, very appreciate it. We will put it to good use. I will by keep the lights things. on. You are I'm keeping the lights on, and we'll use that money to buy some duct tape so we can keep the lanterns said. to that wall. <laughs> I'm spending it on crisps. I'm buying crisps. Crisps. More crisps. 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 Thousand pound worth of crisps. I'm going to buy a bounty ball. A little ball. Mm -hmm. Carry on. Oh. Down, tip down the stairs. <laughs> what? You buy, buy a bucket full and then just tip them down the stairs oh, outside. Yeah. Like oh, that's that a long Samsung way to go TV advert. It's so good. I'm not picking them up. That's a weird reference. Um, I was thinking the music though. We had a uh, Donny from the Clever Toad themselves. Yes. Uh, and it says, "Don't blink. Don't even blink. Blink and you're dead. They are fast, faster than you can believe. Don't turn your back. Don't look away. And most of all, don't blink." I mean, today you'll have good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Very good coffee pastas. Is that Xanthius's coffee pasta? <laughs> yes, is that That's Doctor, Doctor Who. Doctor Who. I know, yeah. but I was saying it's a bit Xanthius, though. How, how much do I have to pay you to get the secret? The Weeping Angels freaked me out. So no, yeah. you can't. No, I hate them. Those so are for mine. No, we and go directly. We just beat them up. We have enough space in the studio for an actual clever toad machine. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh my god, can you imagine? Can no. you fucking imagine? That? Yeah! No. Oh like, a zombie, like a Zoltan machine. Oh can my you god. fucking oh imagine? No. no, do you know what we do? Because well, I, I remember that uh, Crit Roll did this thing, <laughs> at, I, I think at a Gen Con, they yeah. did a, a merch booth where Matt yes. was called Matt Soul. Yes. We'll do it where I'm the clever toad. <laughs> <laughs> so your head is a toad. Or oh, I'll be ZZZ and then we'll have it and then I'll just come out and abuse people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll like beat them up. <laughs> hey, Ma! What are you doing here? That's my machine! <laughs> what have you bought? Funko Pops? Put them in the bin! <laughs> Fuck them! Funko <laughs> Pops. Buy our merch! <laughs> Buy it now! <laughs> oh my god. Fucking Christ. <laughs> Instantly, yeah, we might be doing some live events this year, so maybe that'll be the thing. That's it. We can have a, we Come can, get abused by in Mark. In our booth, we can have an actual clever toad. What a cool booth idea. That'd be that'd awesome. Be so what, cool. How do you make this happen? Yeah. You make the rest of the machine. Okay. Oh, I can do it. I can do the wood. Yeah, you can do I the wood. And then so you, you can, can taxidermy. Yeah. 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 No, get a big I frog and we're gonna no, kill it and stop it. I'll, I'll get lots of fairies. <laughs> oh, okay. our previous toad is withered away. We have to slaughter another one. <laughs> well, if you taxidermy it right, it should be good for a long time. I can, can we get a lot of like, toads. <laughs> it's gonna be to one big toad. Filigree and stuff. Yeah. The mega toad. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, uh... <laughs> I'll do the crucible thing first. How about that? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I go. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have a donation a from Hypnodia that says, Hi folks, just wanted to congratulate you on a very successful eighth birthday of High Rollers. Thank you very much. It's Thank my you. first with you, but I'll be there for more to come. Oh, Keep yeah, on rolling. Yeah, Thank you very much. Board. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Uh, Choo choo! All the train! <laughs> Alaska I'm Winter 923. I'm a toad's a magic hat. You and should I, do that though. Um, I, I'll learn it. Alaska Winter 923 with a quarter hundo. Hello from the northwest of Alaska. Hello. Congrats Hello. on Alaska eight beauty. years currently Hello. working through the Aroas campaign. Thank you very oh, much for joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, quarter hundo from Absolute Scotsman. 
Uh, this is a, there's two donations here. High Rollers have been watching Yogs since Shadow of Israfel. I was eight, wow. now I'm 12. I know High Rollers is not Yogs anymore, but you guys are my favorite thing to come from the Yogs. And I'm- Thank you. Damn straight. Where the fuck did that just go? Did you just delete And I'm happy to <laughs> finally leave the VOD squad for the first time today. Love you and thanks. Aww. And there's a second Hello. message. Uh, I have a character who is an icy Norse inspired Goliath, barbarian variant with dragon blood called a Frostborn. Cool. Uh, his name is Bo Bjorn. Keep yeah. his race in mind. So I did a endowment roll. Now Bo has a Goliath-sized nat twenty of his own. All hail the Hypno Toad! Oh my god! <laughs> Incredible! Amazing! Holy shit! That's, that's, that's your um, contribution to the D and D world. Yeah. yeah. Rolling for dick size. size. I probably wasn't the first, was I? No. You no, will not be the last. No, but it was just how you had the twenty, then the one. It was just perfect. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, I'm pretty average. Was it just a ten? Eight. Eight? We eight. count it as a ten. Something. But it's, yeah. um, you're near eight. Which is a ten. It's a leg. Um, Heinebold uh, donated two hundred and thirty-one pounds oh, and forty-one oh pence. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, still catching up uh, and still a vod squid. Okay, uh, but wanted my first dono uh, to be for the birthday stream. I found oh. you folks and D and D itself when someone showed me Knights of Evening Star. Oh, and cool. I needed some more awesome Mark DMing. Oh, Here's yeah. one uh, euro for every High Rollers episode I've watched. Oh, wow. wow, that's a lot. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. I don't know the conversion rate on euros. It might have been like ten episodes. Not the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jacob Chickpea, happy birthday, High Rollers, and happy very belated birthday to Kim. Hey. Hey. Thank you! Uh, I also wanted to let Kim know that my character uh, in a recently completed campaign was partially inspired by Nova, so thank you oh, for the inspiration. Well. Thank you. Um, Hench Wench, happy birthday, Rollers. Thank you for everything you do. Here's to another eight years. I'm joining Painkiller Club as I hurt my back at the weekend. Oh, 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 oh. We that? reveal. We should now reveal, if it wasn't obvious, who was Painkillers, who was No Sleep, me. Who's been sick since Friday? Yeah. <laughs> it's this Woo! side of the table. Projectile vomiting since Friday night. Woo! Pride! And I've been riddled nice. for years. Um, <laughs> oh <my. laughs> Get out. I'm Get the right. fuck out. <laughs> um, Physically. I'm Mentally. Just, yeah. yeah. I'm ill in the soul. Yeah. <laughs> House of Raw. I'm, uh, I'm sick. Sick, tubular, yeah, yeah, and tubular. ill, and wicked. <laughs> um, you are wicked. <laughs> I'm joining Painkiller Clubs. I hurt my back at the weekend. Blah, blah blah blah. Perhaps time to work on my Ophelia cosplay while I'm house oh, yes. oh, oh, uh, Make it so. Hashtag justice. Oh, for one day I want to go to Comic Con. Oh, like a whole big group of high rollers uh, cosplayers. So cool. I will be <laughs> personal. Yeah. There's always one of certain characters. <laughs> this is a good. It will all be oh, daisies and Ophelia. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's never <laughs> And then be a it'll be like all days and Ophelia's, the occasional Xanthius, one gruff who's like a big fur Furry dude. guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like nobody's around. That's done a run. No, that's all right. It's impossible. Yeah. And then like no. one random NPC yeah. that but I mentioned once. We did get that for um, Lightfall. We yeah, got we the did. full lineup. Yeah, yeah, we did. Get the full lineup. yeah. There's your challenge. Join the Discord, the uh, cosplay section in there. Yeah. There is a cosplay very channel. It'll be very, very nice. cool. We've got a very few people supportive. making plans. Um, very good humans. MK13 Wolf is back with a full ass joke, which I'm, I don't want to read the entire joke because I think you'll know the punchline. I made a belt out of watches. Mm -hmm. You don't know this one? No. Nope. Uh, and I thought it was pretty sick, so I showed my mother, but she said it was a waste of time. Oh. Really? Wah, 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 never, wah, never, wah, wah. never heard that it's one. Not, it doesn't that. deserve a laugh, it deserves a. Mm. Mm. Oh. Mm. I, I don't like live in that world. Mm. An exhale from the nose. That's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not from the nose. <laughs> it was both. It was so out of the nose that it also came out of the mouth afterwards. <laughs> you can suck out a candle like that. <laughs> you can. I've got no, video evidence. Do it, Mark. Um, I did it. Hey, you didn't. Crispy is back with a half hundo. Oh. Crispy. Oh, Crispy. Thank you, Crispy. Um, because she did not get birthday wishes on stream last year, I'm wishing Kim a belated happy birthday oh, for the 15th of December. Yes. Thank um, you. Happy eighth birthday to High Rollers 2. Thank you for all the juicy lore this week. I have to say that Gruff fan go fan boying over the night was adorable. Yeah. It was. Um, it, was it was. And you're going to get lessons. Little lessons. Yeah. Little how to hold a sword. How to night. How to night. Oh, God. Uh, we have another message, an important message from the anti-Dragon Althea movement. Oh god, here we go. Praise be the Scions, may our souls be blessed and cycled until we ascend to the heavens themselves. Let the souls of the world be draconic nobles, be damned to wander the wastes along with their bastard empress. We fall on our knees before the saints. 
Jesus Christ. It's so blasphemous. Wow. Wow. Blasphemy. I don't... Heresy. At what point do we start censoring this? Uh... Heresy. <laughs> it's too much. I'm too embedded in this world now. I can't hear that. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Ears are burning. Can we do what I want? Uh, Martin Fused uh, donated with happy eighth birthday and also get well soon. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we're old now. Here's a small yeah. amount for restorative and bouncy balls. Thank you. Yes. I like bouncy balls. Um, spa day? Spa, spa day with yeah. bouncy balls. Oh, I yeah. love that, yeah. Bouncy ball spa day. Oh. Fill the spa with ball. bouncy balls. Ball. Ball. <laughs> ball. Ball. He's just malfunctioned. Oh, he's ball. Ball. That's what I said. I could get out of my ball. Was it even like in your head? Ball, 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 Everything Trot was, has ever been, I'm and ever will ever be. be ball. 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 It's like Dexter's lab when all he can say is only do for a moment. Oh my god. Do you, do you have to you have shoot shoot yourself yourself there? Yeah. I I'm concerned. Yeah. I'll be fine. Um, I've got this hand. <laughs> you drive with the tiny hands. Ball. 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 Oh. Um, is that oh. Thomas and more? There is more. Uh, we had a donation from Crizzy29. Um, Thank you. Just went through a lot of stuff, including my 32nd birthday this month. That's not all. Samesies, I think. I can't remember no. my age. I really get through everything uh, knowing you guys are going to be awesome. Watch the and table. Happy birthday to High Rollers. Thank you very Thank much. You. Crizzy29. I just need to do a big happy fat birthday. refresh. Happy um, birthday. Uh, give me Uno Memento while I load up the YouTube ones as well. Yeah, how uh, talk no, 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 talk amongst yourselves. Say Hello. something funny real YouTube quick. Donations. Ball! From this way. Ryan. Can One I, I can just read it for potions. you? Guys. Hey, we had a five oh, dollar super chat here. from Orion. There you go. <laughs> Great way to end the week. Not. Great. I can't Oh, Sorry. <laughs> Orion with a super chat on YouTube. Great way to end the week and get ready uh, for some Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Fuck yeah. Oh. Fuck yeah. Hey. Gloomhaven, all about Real that. quick, <coughs> great way to spend a weekend. Do you want? We should get back on that. Fuck. Please do. Can I join? I've got DaVinci Originals in the board game now. I know. It's actually it pretty banging. Baller. Big. Big. Huge. Yeah. Huge. It's as big as. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I thought, oh my god, what? have you seen the video of the person who goes to pick up their child, sees themselves on the security camera, yes. and freaks the fuck out? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. For some reason, I saw yeah. there was something in front of me, and I was like, there is a moth or a flame <laughs> or something here. <laughs> I think we need to go home. Please hurry. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Nicholas, uh, thank you for your... Reinforcements! ...donation. Um, <laughs> well, watching the rest of Aroas because military life kept me behind. You guys are so good at using Catholic raw emotion. Well, it is fragile. With these characters, I wish you all luck. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Um, so uh, there was a message from Charles R. Amazing RP guys. I'm one of the late to the party crew catching up on a rose. Love your Strahd run too. It was emotional. Uh, sending inspiration your way. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching through our backlog. Um, and Nicholas R. Uh, donated again. Rowan needs Percival's fortune. What? <laughs> <laughs> seeing the four potions laid out like that, I was about to literally launch into a whole section of the movie The Mummy and be like, the cur! <laughs> Yeah, because they look like... Um... Can I open jars? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a curse upon this chest. Um, but anyway... Um, we are legion. Um, um, <laughs> was one! We have hive mind. Is that it? We good? Hang on. Can we go home now? Hang on. Thank you for the gifted subs. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us as a member. Thank you for joining us on Patreon. Uh, remember to join the Discord. That is where you get early access to VODs because YouTube's membership system is fucked, frankly. Um, <laughs> so join the Discord <laughs> and you'll see everything channel. there. The supporters channel exclusive to anyone on Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube members. And connect your account. And connect your accounts. Connect your accounts. Thank you very much for all your support, whether it comes from a donation or a membership or just sharing just and here. getting yeah. your mates just to come here. and watch and just being here. Just sharing fan art, being in the Discord. We love you. Love you. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 B